What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer, today joined by the Revolver Live crew. And from our hearts, we say happy holidays to you. Brian Rabbit, what's going on, man? How you feeling this week? Pretty good. I'm drinking a bottle of absinthe. I'm ready for a show. It is Tuesday, not Sunday. What's yeah. up? <laughs> it's going to be a great show. And guys, that is, no ja- no, that is not a joke. That's the real shit in the bottle. You should have saw the pre-show. Gary Diaz, <laughs> how you feeling today, my friend? I'm feeling uh, suitably festive. I'm coming to you from the uh, British holiday of Boxing Day, which I've heard you American compatriots are not too familiar with no, Boxing Day. Is that day? correct? Yeah, I, no I idea. Have to hear this. Boxing Day. Well, the British people in the chat will obviously be able to corroborate my festivities here. Um, in many ways, it's almost like a celebration of the consoles, um, which is is quite um, apt for it being uh, a gaming podcast. So Boxing Day dates back to the old English tradition um, of, you know, Christmas Day, the wealthy people of the house would obviously receive their gifts and part ways and have festivities and turkeys. And the poor servants of the house, you know, they'd be waiting on them hands and toes. And, you know, where's where's their little something, something? Boxing Day is a time when you give your servants and peasants of the household a box, a Christmas box, hence Boxing Day. So this is for you, all you PlayStation and Xbox guys out there. Happy Boxing Day. (laughs) You sack of shit. I was was holding on, too. I was holding on to every word. Like, this is interesting. Until you fucking dissed us. Gary, Leave it to Gary to just make a holiday to to just find another reason to be an elitist. So it's it's like second Christmas for poor people? Is that what it is? It's kind of like, game. I don't know if it's second Christmas. It's more just kind of like, you know, a nod nod to the poor. <laughs> You're not rich enough to enjoy Christmas, so we'll give you Boxing Day. It's a you, can have, hat, you, know? you can have the stuff that we don't want. <laughs> exactly. You serve me well. Here's a box of leftovers. Here's a He's... bunch of re-gifts. <laughs> you serve me well. Here's a PlayStation 4. Happy, exactly. happy, happy Boxing Day, uh, Gary Diaz. All I have to do now is find a box that's suitable to, to shit my yobo in, and I'll help you celebrate this year. Wilson! Yo, what's up, today, man? Yeah. It, was, oh, it, was great. it was great. Again, like I said, everyone gathers around the table. It was family. Yeah, we had the whole deluxe lunchable thing going on where everything was I could create my own snacks and things. And if anybody great, asked, man. you could just say it's hors d'oeuvres. That's yeah, it's hors d'oeuvres. That. It's that fancy pants lunchable. Uh, but no, for real though, uh, I was a little worried that we weren't going to get a so uh, much white oregano Christmas. in here. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely got to have the oregano. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> oregano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. Uh, great. We finally got a, uh, a little bit of snow on the ground. So um, I hate Christmas when it's not a white Christmas. So it was kind of cool on Christmas Eve to get some snow. So, Whoa. yeah, we talked about that actually. Uh, I believe it was yesterday, the day before, where, where you, Kate, and I played some Fortnite. And you, uh, you, I feel that, you know, being from up north, being from Ohio, but down here in Georgia, Christmas Day was like 65 degrees. And so oh, really? There's, it's, yeah, there's no snow here. It's well, actually. Yeah. We got snow like Christmas Eve into the morning of Christmas morning. So it was like we got a rain and ice storm like like a day before Christmas. And it looked like it's just going to be bleak weather and shitty out. And then boom, boom, we got snow. Yeah, like well, Christmas. right on time. I'm yeah. dreaming of a white <laughs> woman. Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics, and you can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We check that. We monitor that. So make sure you guys send in your feedback, your questions, your reviews, anything you'd like to that web to that uh, email address. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's Twitch. That TV forward slash Briar Rabbit as you are right here. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, please check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that, welcome to Revolver Live, episode 22. Two and two. We are, like we are here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> we got a great show lined up for you guys today. Hopefully, we can have some fun and, and have some witty banter back and forth. We were unable to kick it with you guys on Sunday because, you know, Santa sucks. And usually right. when he comes, he comes down the chimney of the houses that have him and say, no show today. No show around my house. Too holiday. busy eating uh, milk and cookies. Well, I thought you were about to say milk nuts. Okay. 
Yeah, that would have been my, my Christmas. So, <laughs> guys, we have six amazing topics ready for these guys today. But bef- before we do that. I would say three amazing topics and three somewhat mediocre topics. Well, I mean, well, don't tell me to the end of the show which we're rich. <laughs> that way I can decide for myself. Before we get started with the show, uh, Mr. Diaz, would you like to uh, say a word from our sponsor? I would. I mean, they're a, a pretty good sponsor to have around this time of the holidays, the time of gifts, giving and receiving gifts. And I mean, what better gift, really? What what sums up the holidays better than... What do you want in your box on Boxing Day more than a, a dick? <laughs> Your master's dick. That's a, Perfect. That's, dick in the boxing that's day. It. That's how you Boom, find the ladder. Day. Gary, that's, that's how, how you, you re- find the ladder. Yeah. That's how you reward the servants of the house with your dick in a box. <laughs> I mean, that's that's just a civil suit waiting to happen. Gary, um, I think, Gary, you'd make a great pizza man, but continue. Carry on. Well, you know, from, from my perspective, uh, a dick in a box is a gift so precious and majestic that Really, I think it shows the caliber of your persons and your true intentions to uh, to the, the beholder. And um, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't put your own penis in a box, then you can visit bagofdicks.com where they offer a smorgasbord of products to suit each and every one of your specific pork salt needs, including the brand new box of singing dicks. Revolver are pleased to announce our sponsorship and we are offering you, our perverted and debauched listeners, the exclusive and frankly ludicrous promotion of 20 percent off any order from bagofdicks.com using code revolver live now we've had an absolute tidal wave of orders through december um you need really need to get in there because stocks on dicks are low the warehouse door you know the, the stocks in the warehouse we can see the pile was going down um if you if you don't want to be disappointed when you can't get the dicks you need Order dicks early. That's what I've always lived my life by. You know, if you, if you see a dick, jump on it. Um, hey, stock, stock is down, but I I hear dick stock is on the rise again, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and there's nothing worse than being disappointed in your dick. So make sure you get it on time. Order it now. I mean, if you're not already convinced uh, about the perfect marriage of penis and confectionery, uh, then head to bagofdicks.com. And use your Revolver Live promo code for a discount on the order of Baloney Ponies. Remember, <laughs> Revolver Live code for twenty percent off. Thank you. Yeah, what I don't know just... how you read that without cracking up every time. You never, you never, you never breaks character. It's just no. who Gary never is. Characters. And, and every time I hear him, I feel like I could be seventy years old. And every time I hear it, I can't hold it in. It's just so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> the, the, the depths that his mind had to go to formulating that amazing ad read. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. I mean, it's, it's heartfelt. It's genuine. You you can't fake emotion about that. When I talk about something that I'm genuinely passionate about, you know, dicks. <laughs> Um, it just it flows naturally, you know. If you got me talking about anything else, I'd, I'm a blubbering mess. But give me a nice, veiny, throbbing cock to discuss, and I'll wax lyrical for hours. You, you sound with your accent. You sound like a person with an IQ of 260. And then to hear the words "baloney pony," yeah, it, <laughs> suddenly it makes you feel much smarter because that's the kind of shit a regular guy says. That's amazing. Yeah, Gary's got a way of words. So before we get into our topics, uh, we'd like to discuss Revolver Plays. I don't know if Mr. Diaz actually has figured out what he wants us to do yet, or maybe would you like the show to think about it, Gary, or do you have an idea what you want us to do? A couple of ideas, but I need to do a little bit of research. So by the end of the show, I'll be able to announce um, what we're going to be playing on Tuesday for Revolver Plays. But uh, I think we should discuss what we played last week, because some people might not have tuned into Briar Rabbit's stream to see it. And BC, it was your topic, so please take us away. What did we play? What did we play? We played Fortnite on, let me just say, my my console first, PS4 and PC. It's one of the few games that is actually cross-play on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. So being a PlayStation 4 console game... I I know that it was at one point. Didn't they take that out, the PS4 and Xbox cross-play? Let me clarify. PlayStation 4 owners can't play against Xbox owners, but they both can play PC gamers. Oh, okay. So it, it works that way. And, and who knows? I don't know if it would actually work that way. I have it in, in my Xbox in my bedroom. So That's yeah, an that's awesome cool. feature. It, was, it It's really nice that no matter what console or platform that you're playing on, you can play with your friends in Fortnite Battle Royale. That's dope. That was the first time I ever experienced that. And actually having my guys, my crew together with me, all playing on PC. I'm on the PS4, not feeling inadequate like I sometimes do. Uh, 
And well, that I game is much to... more built for a controller than like something like PUBG, right? Yeah. And and we had a blast, man. I mean, I thought we had a great time. I, we might have played more than two hours. We just got down and went in there and, and did well some games and sucked ass some others. But that's the name of the game. Yeah. Uh, it's To me, that's what I've been playing all weekend. All Christmas weekend, that's what Kate and I played. Uh, I put in a ton of hours playing that game. And uh, when we played it, you know, with Revolver Plays, that was really my first time with a group of three friends. And it changed the whole dynamic for me. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of like having AI everywhere. You know, every every enemy coming from different directions. You got people watching your back. And uh, it, it gave me kind of the same feeling I have when I play Destiny. I got my team with me. You know, we're out there doing shit together. And Rolling I just with my crew. Abs- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tupac, Thug Life. Uh, I just had a great time. What did you guys think of uh, playing Fortnite with the Beast? I didn't love it. <laughs> I don't. And that's not to say that I don't like playing with you guys or specifically you, Beastly. I didn't. I didn't get the same feel I get out of uh, PUBG from that game. This is the first time I played the Battle This is actually one of our topics, so just go right into yeah, it. Yeah, we're man. just going to go right into it. Battle Royale uh, in PUBG, it felt very different than it does. Or I'm sorry, Battle Royale in Fortnite felt very different than it, what I'm used to in PUBG. And maybe given some more time, I might warm up to it some more. But there were a few things that I really picked out that I didn't really dig on too much. One of them was uh, the guns weren't as satisfying to shoot. Um, it's funny too, because I liked shooting the guns in the kind of zombie apocalypse mode that is the PVE mm-hmm. side of that game. And I actually had a great deal of fun. Uh, but suddenly because there's like bullet spread in the game, bringing that into a PVP environment, it didn't feel as good. Like it didn't feel as satisfying. I felt like when I'm shooting, I, I want some kind of agency over where my bullets go that I didn't necessarily feel like I had in Fortnite. Um, also, I didn't love the building aspect of it. It's it's cool. It's novel. I think that if that's for you, it's a really cool addition to the battle or to the battle royale gameplay. But for me, it's just not. It wasn't an additive feature. It was something that got in the way of shooting people, which is what I'm here for. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I I kind of get the the same kind of vibe that uh, Briar just expressed from you, Gary. How did you feel about Fortnite? So I'm going to talk about, you know, the first part of my answer is to talk about Fortnite objectively and then my view on it. So I see Fortnite as a game that's more accessible than PUBG um, and conversely actually has a higher skill ceiling than PUBG. So it's it's kind of, e- it, it's got both ends. You know, it's got, you can get into it with no experience and have a good game. And then if you're good at it, you can dominate and get 40 kills in a game and, you know, absolutely outplay people, you know, back box them in uh, a microwave at the end of the game and let the storm, you know, cook them. I've you've seen plays like that happen. Mm-hmm. But for everyone else in the middle tier, which is not absolute garbage at the game and not an absolute god, I don't think it's as satisfying to play as PUBG. So if you've got a little bit of skill uh, and you can play a Battle Royale game, I feel like you have more satisfying engagements and more fun just traversing the map and approaching encounters uh, in PUBG than you do in Fortnite. To me, Fortnite plays out the same, and again, I'm talking middle skill player, plays out the same all the time, which is I see someone, I panic build, I start throwing grenades or shooting explosions at them, and I try to shoot out the anything that they're built in and spray AR shots at range till I kill them. So to me, it's, it's very, you know, for, for middle skill players, there's not that um, tactical gameplay to it that you see in PUBG where a middle skill player will be hiding in bushes, flanking, traversing, using lots of different weapons, making long shots. I don't know. Uh, it might be my perspective on it. I could be completely wrong, but that's the takeaway I, I got from it. Well, and I, I 100% uh, respect you guys' opinion. I think as, as a Battle Royale game that PUBG is probably a better experience when it comes to that. I think that Fortnite is more accessible. It's an easier to play game. But I also think that at those higher levels, and like anything, if you stick to it and you really fine tune your skills, PUBG, in my opinion, can probably be a much more gratifying experience uh, or fulfilling for, for gamers because it adds something that PUBG does not have. And that is the ability to change the landscape, uh, to destroy every, uh, every part of the world is destructible. Uh, if you if you find yourself in a really bad predicament, you can shield yourself. You can cover your friends in ways that you can't in other games. 
And uh, actually, when Wilson and I was playing the day before yesterday, I, I made this comment to him. I said, you know, I played the single player. I played the horde mode that Briar was just talking about uh, for the first time. You know, when, when I first bought this game with you guys, I had to go through the little uh, tutorial and actually got through it and I played it, you know, waiting for my wife to get ready to come play with me. And that was a ton of fun. I had a great time doing that. And then I went to the um, Battle Royale mode, and that having both of those modes as an option made the game, to me, more enjoyable. And it might be because of my affinity towards console controls or console video games, but at this point, I'm on the other side. And I, I do think PUBG is a great game. I played it you know, a few days ago. I was telling you guys how much fun I had playing it. I think it's a great game. It's just a little bit harder for me to really dig my, my heels in because of the difference, I, I feel like PUBG is not made for that controller. Like I don't, kind of I don't discount your opinion here at all. <clears throat> I see these and, two and, games as being different sides of the same coin. And, mm -hmm. you know, they very much, they're both very, I think, strong products, right? And if you like Battle Royale, I think there's, there's two different products for you that, you know, visually, I think Fortnite is really nice looking. It runs awesome, which is something that PUBG Same engine still too, Brian. can't say. Eh. How the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it runs awesome. That's something that PUBG still can't say, even at, at its 1.0 release. Um, I mean, some people don't like the cartoony graphics. Some people do. I don't have a problem with the cartoony graphics. I, you know, it's vibrant. It looks good. It's easy to, it's easy to spot your enemies as opposed to in PUBG where a guy could be, you know, laying in the grass and you have no ideas there. Um, like I don't, I don't see it as a worse product. It's just not for me. I don't yeah. like it as much as PUBG, you know, you no, know, I, I, got I, you, you know? I hear you. And like, I kind of fall like where I stand on the whole PUBG Fortnite thing is uh, I kind of fall in the middle. So like, I'm kind of with Briar here. I see it as two sides of the same coin. Whereas you could look at Halo and Call of Duty. They're both mm -hmm. first person shooters, but you're going to get a completely different experience out of one or the other. Um, for instance, PUBG seems to be more of like, um, seems to be more of more chess more chess with guns more methodical map movement flanking not that you can't do that in fortnite um but in fortnite it feels more like checkers in a sense that it's it's very fast paced and you got to be quick on your feet um the problem that i was struggling with fortnite was i was playing it like PUBG, and when i would play make moves and try to traverse areas like i would in PUBG it would get me killed. You know what I mean? Like the building and stuff, I'm still kind of getting used to. It's pretty easy to, you know, throw up a wall, change your material and stuff like that. Um, not a huge fan of it, but it is part of the game. You know, it is Fortnite, you know, building forts and things like that. Um, it, I play a lot more PUBG, so I feel a little bit more drawn to that. Um, but I really do like the, fast pacedness of Fortnite, like you uh like gary was saying like you could drop an insane amount of kills in that game if you're good at it you know there's you got to be good at shooting you got to be good at looting you got to be good at building um mm -hmm. and there's some really cool uh what do they call it uh swooping you fly in and or you jump up on the tire and pull out your glider and glide over someone's structure and stuff like there's some really cool things you can do um yeah, man, it's tough, but I, I think it's what Fortnite has going for it, and I think Briar nailed it. It's very accessible and it's free. You know what I mean? Like, and it's you nailed a, it. It's a good introduction to battle royales if you've never played one. Yeah, I mean, that's another you know aspect of the game that I don't think of you know nearly as much because I actually pay what thirty dollars or forty dollars. I forget what it cost us when we first got uh, Fortnite. I think it was thirty. Okay, so we paid money for it, so I, I still see it as something I bought. But if I hadn't bought it initially, and I downloaded it, and I played it, I would have saw, of course, there are contrasts. Graphically, I probably like PUBG and the realism a little bit more. It's, it's more, you know, my style. I prefer games that look like that. But it, I would have, you know, conceded it looks more like Borderlands, but it play, you know, that, that thing that you're chasing is there. The, the team effort is there. You know, it, it runs really well. Uh, you know, building these little walls, these forts and stuff to confuse your, your opponents. It's a great, great deal for no money. I, and to me, it's really hard to believe that, you know, it isn't more popular. I think it's very popular, but it's just a great, great game, in my opinion. They also it is, are it's... 
they're they're updating that game with a new ballistics model too, which I'm really interested to see how that's going to play out because that could solve one of my issues with the game right off the bat. The way the guns run, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we've spoken a lot about Fortnite. Uh, the other part of this topic was PUBG 1.0, which we spoke nothing about. Yeah, um, that was f- fucking brilliant. I mean, Xbox aside, there are some issues with the Xbox build, but that's a very early build at the moment. Yeah, that's not um, 1.0 either. Yeah. If we look at PUBG 1.0, which is the PC full release, it is miles apart, like worlds apart from what we played in the summer. So, Briar Wilson, if you guys hit up the PC release at all, what, what did you guys think of it? Because the desert map and the vaulting and everything about the game just feels polished now. Thank God for that. Was it Saturday when we played Briar? I think it was. We play like good like three hours something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, man. We were we were having a blast. Uh, we were loving the uh, just the new terrain. Like every now and then you'd get the the old map. I don't think we got the old map that entire I don't day. Think, actually. I don't think we. Yeah, did. yeah I, I played like four match four matches and didn't see the old map either. That'd be a yeah, great it's very, game. Very to play. heavily, yeah. very heavily weighted towards the new map. But that's okay because it's awesome. It's vastly different. Um, it's a desert terrain. Um, doesn't feel. You don't really get the feeling of there's going to be a town on the other side of this hill. It very much feels like you're in the middle of a desert mm-hmm. and you don't, unless you look at your map, you don't really know which way to go. Uh, vaulting is great. The new um, scope system with the eight times, being able to switch like to four times and eight times. If you use your mouse wheel, you can zoom out with the eight times. Um, what else was really good? Oh, dude, there's like a... Uh, the bus there's like a volkswagen bus like a volkswagen van from the beginning Wilson's of back party to the bus dude yeah <laughs> and he found we were, cru- we were cruising around in it it was great it actually looks like the um the libyan terrorist bus at the beginning of back to the future um, oh, that's a white bus. so anytime we'd roll up on one prior to, i don't know how they found me but they found me <laughs> <laughs> did you fly in with ak shooting out the roof as well just to get in character that's the only way to do it man you have to Fantastic. um but it felt really good. We had a great day. We were slaying, man. We didn't, we didn't get any chicken dinners. We got a, a second place finish, but we were just absolutely slaying people all day, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, the the new map is. It almost feels like a different game mode in a way because it's so different in the way that the matches play out compared to the original map. Um, even though there's these big, wide open spaces, it's a very hilly terrain, which means that yeah. you, you you have less opportunities where you have to like run through like this wide open field and you just feel like completely at risk. You're usually like kind of cresting mountains and kind of run along ridges and Mm -hmm. the cities, uh, the cities feel much more varied and diverse than they did on the original map. It looks like they had a lot more time to put into art design. And like we found ourselves in a casino at one point, Wilson, which was really kind of cool. Like, it, it's not like this kind of cookie cutter house, you know. There's yeah. in, in on the original map, it felt like there's like three or four buildings. There's more than that, but they just kind of rubber stamped them mm-hmm. where they needed a house. And you walk into that house, and you knew exactly the internal layout of that house right off the bat. In this, it felt like the the buildings are much more varied. It felt like, and this is partially because it's all new. You don't know exactly which way to turn when you walk in. Where people are likely to be hiding, where the where the bathtub is that the guy with the shotgun is hiding in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we invented a, a meta game. We kind of had our own mini game in the. Um, I think when we played with Sweep, you guys were there, which is um, jumping through every possible window yes. we could in a town. Um, and what's good about it is every time you jump through a window. You're just waiting for the Stone Cold Steve Austin Titan Tron music to start. <laughs> you get the glass smash, and all you're just waiting for is a da 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 da. But you know, never happens. Um, it's incredibly I think we jumped through, satisfying. It is. We jumped through about 50 windows in that single town alone before we moved on. <laughs> I feel like um, it's like a way of letting the rest of the team know that, like, it's kind of like peeing on something and marking your scent. <laughs> we're breaking through the windows and we're slowly pushing towards one end of the town, and it pushes everyone else out. I mean, I'd run. I'd, I'd like to see them fog. actually add like a little bit of like a fog effect to the windows, so you can yeah. tell more easily if a window has been broken, broken or out. not. You know, and like like almost like the the windows are dusty or they've just been you know they haven't been cleaned because of the you know the age of the the place you know something like that. One it thing that's really good. One thing that Briar uh, mentioned that became immediately a benefit for me was the verticality of the new map. Like I said, I spent maybe a half an hour on this map running around by my lonesome. 
and I had a great time, but there was one particular spot where I was running up a hill and it was down to the last 12 guys and I got shot in the back and the guy was sniping me and I couldn't tell from where he was, but it was very far away. He hit me like three or four times and I, one more shot, I would have been down and I found a dip in the hill where I crouched down and I started to, you know, to bandage myself up. And I was like, you know, in the original map, it's really flat terrain. So they really yeah. thought about, and, and one thing, another thing you said that really uh, is a huge benefit to these types of games, a map can completely change the whole scope of the game because when you get used to a map, you know, a location, you know, what can happen in that location. Now those locations are completely gone. So you have to find out and investigate what can happen in this new location, which is almost like a whole new game in itself. So, yeah. uh, it's and really a small, awesome. A small feature that they added as well, talking about things that change the game, the kill cam. The kill cam is perfect. It's such a good learning tool because you not only find out who killed you, um, which is really great in itself, which you can anticipate, well, next time I'm in this in engagement or this encounter, maybe I should be checking here or checking there. If you notice on the kill cam, and I don't know if you guys have, you not only see who killed you, but you also see the position of all other players that were in the vicinity at the time. So what I didn't realize when I was playing it there, I got shot by a guy who'd like slowly crept up behind me because I was like watching where I was going, like my, my sort of 180 degree field of view, but wasn't looking at a guy who'd been tailing me for like half a mile, just waiting to get close <laughs> enough. To but what was interesting about that is he was tailing me, but then there were two guys down in the town, like in the building in front of me, just waiting to pop out as well. But I obviously couldn't see them, but that you see them in the kill cam map. So it's really great to know, actually, you, you know, you can be surrounded by people at all times and just not not know whatsoever what was going on. It's a fantastic feature. And the kill cam is really nice. Me and Wilson, we ran into a guy that had either <laughs> godlike reflexes <laughs> or uh, or was cheating. I mean, and it was nice to be able to see that in the kill cam, right? Because this guy, he turned on, I think he turned on me first and then on Wilson and it was like four headshots to both of us, like boom, 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 what? boom, 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 like that right. quick. It was crazy. Yeah, I'd like to think that he was a god <laughs> with an aimbot. <laughs> it's the only way you can beat us. It's yeah. the only way. Yeah. Right. No other way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is good as well. You can report straight from the kill cams. You can watch it and then judge and say, that was a bit suspect and report the player right there in their mid kill cam. So... Yeah, I, mean, I think that's going to help cut down on cheaters, but I just think as a learning tool, that's fantastic to have. You just do what I do, and anyone who kills you just report them for cheating. Yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah, definitely I mean, but... worth checking out the 1.0 right now. Yeah, always, always. if yeah. they beat you, report them. Yeah, let Blue Hole sort them out. Yeah. Let... <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to All see right. a teabagging option added to the game yeah. soon. They need, they need to do that. Emotes. <laughs> Emotes would be really cool. Yeah, bag yeah. boats. Mm hmm. Bags. Starting off with a tea bag, then maybe yeah. a dab. Tea motes. Tea motes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So the, <laughs> the next topic for today's show is what did you get for Christmas? The best and weirdest Christmas presents. Who would like to get started? I'll go because I had time to think about it because it's my topic. So I'll start off. I got a couple of Destiny action figures. I got Lord Saladin, to, uh, he's going to be my sleeping doll. He's going to be who I spoon at night. Good choice. And I got What's a, your wife going to do? She's going to watch you spoon the doll? <laughs> I got a Vault of Glass Titan with the uh, Helm of Saint 14, which is really nice. Nice. Uh, I also got, for my wife, a plane ticket to Guardian Con this year. Oh, Which was a really fucking nice gift, man. Like, I was, like, kind of blown away. Uh, so I'm really, like, it kind of, like, enhanced awesome. my excitement for Guardian Con, which is... Still a ways off, but, you know, we're thinking about, what, six months, seven months away? Be here before you know it. Yeah. Yeah, June, June time. But without a doubt, the present that I appreciate the most, like, without a doubt, because this is something that I've been asking for since I moved into this house and was always told, no, no, it cannot happen. <laughs> I, got a Keurig, I got a Keurig coffee maker for the office. Fuck. You're the man, Ooh. bro. Look at his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a happy man. <laughs> I don't so even have to leave the office to make coffee. There we go. That was going to be my question. You don't You don't got to do shit. Uh -uh. Right. All you I got to put now... it on my desk so I can just sit here. <laughs> All you need now is a urinal, Briar. Get you a urinal in there and you'll never yes. have to leave ever. Yeah. Start small with the bedpan. Like, yeah. I feel like know? a bedpan. Like I, 
I'll be on a stream uninterrupted for hours. <laughs> well, question. That's great. Talking yeah. urinal, has anyone ever had or seen a urinal in someone's house? Because as a single man, when I was a younger man, I often contemplated the idea of having a urinal installed in my own house. Right. Just for convenience factors. You know, because I'm not going to need to do it. If I need a piss, I'm, I'm fine to go in there. You know, I have no female housemates. Like, why can't I do it? I mean, is, is that a good idea or a bad idea? Who's thought yeah. about that? If you have a his and her bathroom, maybe, but, you know, you have a fiancé, and that's just going to piss your wife off. No, now, Where's obviously, it? but as a younger man, that was the uh, that was the jam. That was what I wanted. That was the dream. Yeah, man. You know? Go for it, Gary. Sh- I never had anything that. official, but currently there's two slats between two, like, posts on the deck that serve the purpose. You just <laughs> piss yeah. straight off of that. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real talk, real quick. <clears throat> I can't be the only one that when I let my dog outside, I go pee too, right? Fuck you guys do no, that? man. Like, it, no. Every no, time, you don't? No, I'm saving water. Every time I go outside, I try oh. to pee. Okay. If I had more privacy, I might drop a deuce. Dog's doing it. That's, that is freedom right there. Yeah, but you to be fair, to when... When a dog does it, you've got to pick it up in a little plastic bag, haven't you, and carry it around. Do you do that with your own? Or is it just dogs? I got kids, Gary. Oh, okay. <laughs> you've, got, you've got experience that way. Or are they picking it up? Which one? No, they're picking it up. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> this one's a little bigger. Hmm. I mean, to be fair, it, it does say no dog waste. It doesn't say anything about yourself. Right. I think you're fine in a park just to drop a log. Right. You know how you got to pick up after your dog and carry his shit around maybe if you do it your dog picks up after you and then he feel, carries your shit around like every topic i feel left out because i have fucking cats maybe i'll start taking my cats out oh did you, do you have you ever these? thought about pissing in the uh in the kitter box litter box yeah well my cats they rub up against your legs so i end up pissing on the cat mm. my cat my cat Probably. does that when i take a leak too he'll she'll come up and try to walk through my legs and one day i go <laughs> wait wait like we'll, cat we'll, I go, you Kat, said- you better, I go, you better watch her. One of these days you're going to get pissed on. And Sam had no idea what was going on. So she literally just thought I was threatening to piss on the cat. <laughs> Makes sense. True story. She's like, don't you pee on the cat? I was like, well, if it comes in here rubbing on my legs sometimes, it might get, it might get pissed on. Uh, R. Kelly of threats right there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sing it to the cat? That's the question. I'm going to piss on you. You know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's the jam that's the jam mind's telling you no but the body's telling you yes that's it that's great oh fuck so i used nice. to have a buddy we used to hang out in his basement and get drunk and he had a sump pump and we used to just piss at his sump pump because <laughs> <laughs> what... you know upstairs where the bathroom was was too far away oh my god <laughs> so... My dad, we had a, uh, you know, the, the sub pump down in the basement and stuff. And he caught me down there, like pulling it up out of the water one time and messing with it. And uh, it was already like super fragile and on its last leg. And uh, he's like, you stay away from that. He's like, you know what that is, right? And I said, no, I don't. He's like, that's called the China hole. If you fall down in that, you'll go straight to China and you won't have a family and you'll be an orphan in China. And he goes, if you think I'm bullshit and I just pulled a little China boy out of there the other day, That's <laughs> for, the, hardcore for shit. the longest time, I was terrified of the sup pump in the basement. Like, when I'd go look at it, I'd like grab onto something in case like, you know, I was going to fall down in there. My dad, Sorry, was a, does he, did he keep a, like a captured <laughs> captive Chinese boy just for this parable story to show you? How, where did you get, get him get on and chi- ask? Jesus. <laughs> Wilson has a brother, has a brother somewhere. Has so, yeah. so I've been pissing on him apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I mean that was that's pretty much pissed all over my Christmas as well. My Christmas is far more subtle than that. I got some chili sauce because I likes me some spice. You gonna make um, some chili cones so, with that? that you are, you are, you are, you are Latino. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I've got it. Well, no, I'm not going to pour it on some cones. No, it's just probably going to go in a, a jambalaya or something mm. suitably uh, spicy. Um, maybe a paella for my Spanish roots. But um, Do, you, do no. you eat candy to top too? Because I walk into some you know world stores like H Mart, you'll see like lollipops and different stuff for the, the Hispanic community. And the shit has chilies in it and it's really hot, but it's candy. Do you Do you partake? I'm going to let that cultural stereotype fly. Um, yes, I do sometimes have uh, a sort of chili ah! gobstopper. Um, 
you know, I mainly do it when I'm sort of crossing borders illegally and stealing cars. Um, the but... Latino heat. Shit. Exactly that. <laughs> Gary, <yes. laughs> How do you know if it's a stereotype or if you're just spitting wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. know. I don't, Where's the line there? Got, I think you've got chat there as the uh, the Question. the cultural barometer there. They'll tell me. Tell They'll it, tell you know. me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was fucking offensive, man. My bad. <laughs> I think it's when they when they start spamming "band" in the chat. That's it. Um, you know, you've probably overstepped the line. Yeah. So I had some chili chili sauce, which is great. Um, I did get an Overwatch um, anthology, which is like a collection of graphic novels uh, from the Overwatch universe. So all the comics. That they brought out for Overwatch, which I thought was pretty cool. I didn't know um, they had comics. They do. They've got comics very much. Um, I mean, some other games have, have tried publishing stuff now in, in the content voids that they've got. I'm surprised they're not charging for it. But um, no, Overwatch did do um, sort of like backstory of each character. Um, and it's where the Tracer um, gay scene was was first seen, was, was in that comic. When oh, she's... oh, that wasn't in one of those videos they made? No. Like... No, 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 I've, I've seen I've book, seen. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen Tracer do far worse than that. No, she's kissing some chick I'm on sure, Christmas Day. I'm sure you have. Gary. We, we believe videos. you, Gary Diaz. We I've seen some you. things on the internet with Tracer, man. It, it, it's all of them. They're all a bunch of whores. <laughs> I can never wow. look at them the same way again. See? That you just crossed the line, Beastly. That perfect, <laughs> perfect example. <laughs> I am offended. That's what your friends are for to tell you when you fuck up. <laughs> Perfect. And thank you for demonstrating that point. Yeah, well, that's Cheers. what I'm here for. <laughs> well, for me, uh, I mean, to year, be fair, I didn't think Tracy was doing it because she enjoyed it. I mean, it, it, it looked to me like a acting for the money. I mean, there wasn't love in her eyes in the video I saw. Oh, really? Th there's no. nothing oh, the in the video, eyes, not the, the video. comic book. Stay away, bro. Don't don't go video. down this rabbit hole, bro. I know you're a rabbit. You like rabbit holes. This ain't one you want to fuck with. Just stay well, away from well, Overwatch. I, my only question is, is he talking about the videos or the... He's talking about the videos. Because, I mean, you got to you gotta hand it to an artist that can convey, can convey, I'm doing this for the money in comic book <laughs> form. <laughs> the, fact I mean, that, had... the fact that you're thinking about that when, when, there's, when there's other things going on in that video is shocking. Right. Listen, bro. Did she have a video... college ID, Gary? Oh, no. <laughs> Those Man. videos will do something. The videos will do something to you, uh, Briar. You know, I I have a computer. I have the internet, and I've seen some of these videos. And upon watching them, I immediately felt like banning all my children from playing Overwatch because I know now what these characters are really like. Does it change your view on same. Overwatch? No, the game's still great, but I feel like I'm playing with a bunch of whores. You know, my my <laughs> girls my girls are seven and five, and they love Banned these characters. Twice. I'm like I'm like. You just don't want to play with this character, Nova. She's like, "Why, Daddy?" I'm like, "Because I don't, she's I don't think that really having nice. sex on the internet makes you a whore. I think it makes you the kind of person that I want to get to know better." <laughs> I'm sure it does, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, I don't if, understand if why the... you're shaming these these fine young ladies who are willing to bear everything out on the internet. <laughs> you just fun it, loving, cosplaying. I mean, I'm going to be Fucking honest, ladies. If, that's the, if that's the criteria that You're makes out here you calling whore, them then, whores. You know, quite a few members of this podcast fit the criteria well, you know. It's true. I just can't look at them the same again. Like, I'll look over to expect everyone to drop their guns, and all of a sudden there's going to be a freaking orgy in the game. Yeah. I can't look at it the same way again. Like, I'm on the point. Where is everybody? Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, how many competitive points do you need to unlock those sort of intro animations? Because I'm, I'm down. You know, whatever grind I have to do to get that. I'm definitely going to lock that out on my I mean, girl's PS4. To be fair, it's a simple way to give Destiny some end game. Just, just put that in the uh, the Eververse, man. I'll drop some dollars. Yo, Destiny 2, 7 out of 10. But how's the fucking? <laughs> to, be <laughs> to be determined. To be determined. Well, guys, I, I'm... I feel like really... I'm getting fucked pretty raw by Destiny, so pretty good, apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, you are. Right. Yes, you are. <laughs> you look like the fuck Tess right now, Brian. You strangle her life. Uh, I'd be like a total hate her. fuck. Yeah, you want to. <laughs> so she's almost done breathing. Then let her go. I'd rather just, just push her off the tower. Do <laughs> you imagine so just like. Destiny, it's, it's bad when you're the one getting fucked. It's just a <laughs> daisy chain of Ingram anal beads that she's just popping in you one at a time. 
<laughs> she she doesn't Man. pull them out slow either. It's not like bloop, bloop, bloop. It's, it's like, like starting a ripping lawn- it out like she's starting a lawnmower. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're not spherical. They're some hexagonal motherfuckers. That's going to chafe on the way out. That's right. They're Engram shaped anal beads. <laughs> Engram shaped <laughs> anal beads. I'm going to have to find these. You I guarantee they exist. Yeah. Wilson, to be fair, that's that's a that's a glass blowing franchise you need to get into. It's a lucrative <laughs> business right there. I've been telling them from, for. I think it's got to be years now. I want you to make fucking Engrams. Anal man. beads. <laughs> Engr- anal beads. <laughs> <Engrams. laughs> years. Like, Gary, you'll fucking get the years. first of the Engram anal beads. I'll take It'll the be extra a surprise. large. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the extra large. My yeah. goodness. Christmas gifts to Overwatch porn to Engram anal beads. Um, so I'll go next year. Um, <laughs> oh, I right. Got... Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah, Christmas gifts. I got a Switch. I'm stoked. Yeah, I'm on oh, yeah on man. Switch. Welcome I'm to the pumped, revolution. Man. Yeah, man. She got us uh, Zelda Breath of, Breath of the Wild and um, what is it? Mario and Rabbits. That one. So we still got to pick up Mario Kart and like Mario Odyssey and stuff. Mario Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Get it. Please get it. Don't worry about it. I was really happy it. to see that, Wilson. That's too, all you man. need. All right. Let's uh, see here some first impressions, man. Like, what, what do you think so far? Loving it. Took me a while to get used to these controllers. Um, my hands are huge. Yeah, get um, the uh, pro controller for sure. Yeah, we're definitely going to invest in that. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, I We left my parents' house, went to Sam's parents for like three hours, and then that's all me and Sam did was play Breath of the Wild. Uh, play, I take that back. We did play a little bit of Overwatch, but then I went right back to it. Um, I'm absolutely loving it, man. I'm excited. I can't wait to uh, 10 million get, a little, sold. get a little further into Zelda. I can't wait to play some Mario. Um but the good gifts didn't stop there. My mom also hooked me up with a $50 Steam card, which I spent in about 50 seconds. I think it took me I think it took me uh, less time to type in or I'm sorry, more time to type in the code than it actually did to pick out the games and spend the money. So that was pretty cool. Um, and you had mentioned weird Christmas gifts. OK, Ugh, this is kind of fucked up. Now, keep yeah. in mind, this is from my this is from my grandma. Mind please you, please be anal beads. Please be anal beads. From this the what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> Granny, thanks. You can I don't... slice your bread better now, honey. Look at this thing, dude. This... Oh, a crikey, that's not a knife, mate. This is a knife. Like, is this your is... motherfucking crocodile Dundee? What is going on? <laughs> I don't need this thing. And you know what's even more weird about it is that it says like Mary. It's like laser engraved Merry Christmas <laughs> with like a sleigh ride. Your grandma honey, is a no. gangster, so like, man. Like, Fuck you, but Merry Christmas. Like, if I have to wield this thing, I think that's awesome. edition. Only a thousand made. Limited edition. Now listen, Wilson. If you ever decide to become a, a Santa-themed serial killer, you already have your weapon. Your that grandma. Here's, here's what ominous. happened. Your grandmother was up at four o'clock in the morning two weeks ago, and all of a sudden this dude came on selling some knives. <laughs> He's like, "You're gonna want this for your family." This 2017 Merry Christmas Bowie knife. <laughs> Limited edition, one of a thousand, and if you order one now, I'll throw it in Nintendo Switch. I don't even care. Like it's just you're it's just giving it away. You know I, I see that as an ominous warning, man. The elderly are wise people, and she sees some shit brewing in 2018 that right. she wants to prepare you for. They yeah. say history man. repeats itself, and she's preparing you for what she's already lived through by giving <laughs> by giving you a fucking 18 inch knife. Grandma's not that old. Holy shit. Uh, but, <laughs> But no, uh, maybe maybe I'd like to think she just knows I'm a fucking warrior. You know what I mean? Warrior. Yeah, I'm a thug life. <laughs> life warrior. For me, it was a little bit more slowed down. Uh, I got a gift that kind of is a gift for her, but she got it for me. Now, I don't know about you guys. When it gets 50 degrees, I still have my fan on. It, actually, I want to say back in uh, August, I still had my air conditioner running at nighttime. I mean, so I, I like it cold at night. I'm one of those guys where I'll get under the cover I get under the sheet and I will crank up the coldest temperature. Is it so August, gotta... the hottest month of the year? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's let's keep moving. September, October, when it gets cold, uh, <laughs> super cold down here in Atlanta. Anyway, right? Co- right? You need you need coat and moon boots weather. And um, we got a king size. Uh, what? No, a king size <laughs> electric blanket, Briar. I also got new new clippers uh, because mine are about twelve years hair old. Hair clippers so. or nail clippers. Hair, right? Hair, okay. What? Yeah, it's all gone. It's all gone. I had to test it you out. You don't have nail clippers? No. How do you cut your no- nails? I put them in my wife's mouth. 
with a with a big ass Bowie knife. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how you fucking go. And and, and look, since I, I had pretty much all the video games, right? And uh, I was kind of on the fence about the whole idea of the Xbox One X. I decided not right now. And so she was looking at my wish list of games, and she got me like the only game that I don't have that I really wanted. What's that? And that's Final, Final Fantasy Twelve. Um, the remake for the PS4, the Zodiac Age. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy XII was my second favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. Is and XII the one that was like the political intrigue one? Yes, with the judges. No, not – is it political? I guess. There's a king and a queen and a prince dies and all this mm-hmm. crazy shit is happens. Is it a PS2 There's, game or a PS3 game? It's a PS2 game. Yeah. PS2 game. I have, I have two copies of it over there for PS2. I bought it twice. I bought the steel book and I bought the original. And so it was one of those games that I really wanted to to test out and play. And I've watched the intro a couple of times, but like many other RPGs, I haven't had time to get into it just yet. Well, I mean, with how much you enjoy Final Fantasy. Let me just say this. You know, when you get to my level of parenting, I have five kids. It gets to the point where, you know, Christmas is really about the expression of your children's faces. I got two kids in high school, so they're at the point now where I don't buy them shit. I just give them money. You know? Yeah, it's getting to that point, right? Where I can't, you know, Brett Brett's about to be seventeen. Brendan's about to be sixteen, and so it's not like you know they have PS4s. I don't, I don't want to pick a game for them, so they both get a few hundred dollars. And you know, in typical teenage fashion, they look and say, "Oh, thanks, Dad," and they walk in their room and they get on iTunes or they get go on the PlayStation Network and, and start to spend the money. Now the girls, uh, they got a PS4 this year, and uh, you know, they tears in their eyes. They love that. And to me, that was kind of the big joy, you know, plus Nina's birthday is on the 17th. So it's right before Christmas. So everything kind of comes and hits me at once. And it's like a big hurdle in my life. Once it's over, I can breathe. So that to me, that's the best Christmas gift. I can stay warm at night with a electric blanket. I can cut my hair so my head gets cold. Yeah. And it, it's confusing. It, buying four kids, once they hit like the teenage years, gets really, really difficult because they hate everything, especially yep. anything that you're doing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and like they're even if they want something desperately, they sure as hell aren't gonna talk to you about it. Yeah. They, they talk to assholes about everything. Yeah. I remember my sons used to be with me all the time said, Dad, you're the best dad. I haven't heard that shit in ten years. Yeah. Shit. I uh I got lucky this year. I mean, obviously my kids are gamers, so I you know, I know by default what to get them. So I got them uh, a bunch of steam cards, which made them smile. Like there's legit actual smiles. Mm-hmm. That was impressive, and I got him. <laughs> I got him a full set of uh, like new PC gaming peripherals, like uh, new keyboards, new mice, new headsets. Uh, and they were they were pretty psyched about that. They were fucking around with the uh, the lighting on the LED keyboards and everything today, and that was cool to see. That's something I was looking at uh, last week to buy myself. That's another thing, though. I've gotten to the point now where it's like I don't tell her anything. I bought her a black diamond ring. That's what I got her because mm-hmm. you know. It, it's je- the the diamonds are actually black. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Mm. Um, but I can't really tell her because you know I work. She works from home. She works for Google from here. But the shit that I want, I just buy it and I deal with the repercussions later. Like if I see something I want, I'll buy it. And then I'll get a text. You know that money was for this, right? And I'll say, uh, I love you. I'll see you when I get home. And that's <laughs> what I, right? That's what that's what grown-ups do. I, every day is yeah. Christmas for us. I find yeah. that exact oh, yeah. same problem. Like Christmas is difficult now, not for yourself, because you just buy what you want when you want it. So it's you know you don't have to wait anymore. See, I'm um, not like for... that. I don't buy what I want when I want it. I mean, I'll buy what I really? need when I need it, but the stuff I want is usually kind of like on the back burner. It's usually so frivolous, like a fucking coffee maker for my office. You know, like. Mm. The, Legitimately, how can you justify you that, spending a hundred dollars uh, on a coffee maker, which you have one of literally eight feet away, directly downstairs? <laughs> like it just but doesn't Brian, make any fucking sense, right? So I don't think you know how much you needed that coffee maker. Your eyes lit up so fucking big when you <laughs> said, "I have a coffee maker." You needed that. To me, Maybe the gift was the gift was that you know it was just so funny because it was it become kind of like a meme around the house is that. Oh, well, if I had a coffee maker in the house, you know, like I could do this or I could do that. Just stupid shit, right? Or in the office. I don't know. It was it was it was uh, act of kindness and something that it was just fun. 
I'm thinking about Briar's wife, and I want to say this real quick to everybody watching, everybody listening. Go over to Twitter and follow Miss Briar Rabbit. She, yeah, don't piss her uh, off because she's fucking she, savage. She routinely destroys we'll myself and Gary Diaz. And you know, I take oh, great she, joy. She is savage as you Seeing her right. savage Gary Diaz. Every time she does it, I grab my phone and I run to show my wife how Gary just got fucked on Twitter. It's the greatest thing. She even gets me. It happens. And she, she had the most endearing and passionate picture sitting, I believe, on her, on her front or back porch. She looked like she was nursing an injured or sick squirrel yeah, to baby health. squirrel, yeah. It, it, she, she looked so protective. Her eyes conveyed through the picture, stay away, fucker. And she tagged me in <laughs> yeah. it, it, the one that got away. I felt really bad, but I still have the taste in my mouth. Yo. Yeah, dude, she's a gag. Did you see what she got me with today? It, no, said, uh, it said NASA... Um, explains that they are probing Uranus deeper than before. I know, it was a legit yeah, was, article and she tagged this me in it. Rabbit, She's the best. Yeah, she's like, Wilson, could you look into this and explain more, please? And I'm like, that is amazing. I read the, the, the article and it said, NASA wants to probe Uranus deeper than ever. And that was the legit title of a legit article. Legit, the hardest I've laughed in a long time is when I was on Twitter and I saw that she had... Found she was out Christmas shopping and she found a <laughs> calendar that said it was a picture of a of an unshirted male, right? No shirt on this guy, and he was wearing a kilt. And the name of the <laughs> cal- calendar was Kilty Pleasures, you know, like the kilt, Kilty yeah. Pleasures. And of course, she tagged Gary Diaz. <laughs> I did. That guy on the front looked like he was I mean, chiseled out of stone, dude. Yeah, that, he, did. he was I mean, an attractive I'm, man. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, easiest wank I've ever had. So, yeah. <laughs> Not a bad time. <laughs> yeah, so follow her, but be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to fuck her up, but she will get Certainly you. Certainly not suitable for work. Miss <laughs> Rye Rab is not suitable for work. All right, so we're having a lot of fun today, guys. It's kind of a slow show. I feel like we're, things are slowing down. This is, this is great, actually, to be totally honest. The next topic is one of my own. Uh, so this holiday, I spent uh, almost the entire weekend in this small space, my office with my wife, my girls. I, I showed you guys videos of us all playing Fortnite together. And starting from Friday, when I got off work, I stopped and got some Jack Daniels bourbon. And I couldn't find eggnog. So I, I literally drove around for about an hour looking for eggnog. I went to the next county, went to every liquor store. They were all out. And then I, on my way home, I just stopped across the street at Wayfield, they had a surplus of it. It just blew my mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, when I got home, Kate and I d- devised a drinking game. Now, for people who don't normally drink, actually, this is the first time I've had bourbon in probably it's been eight years. Perfect and so, opportunity for a new drinking game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we d- we devised this Christmas drinking game, and the way it went was we were playing Fortnite, and the the bad thing is you really want to take in some alcohol. You want to do it at a pretty decent time, but you don't really think through the game. And so I, I thought of a game. It didn't make much sense, but it sounded fun. Playing Fortnite, every time you kill someone, you take a drink. What, what it was was eggnog mixed with bourbon spiked eggnog, and it was really good. Or every time you get killed. Uh, what the fuck is what, Gary? Are you the fuck is eggnog, man? It's oh, don't do this, all this the Gary. Time. Oh, my <laughs> God. Don't you fucking Boxing do Boxing Day and you don't know what eggnog is? Yeah, like, sure. No, no, no. I, I've heard about it. I've heard about alcoholic egg juice that you guys drink. It looks like curdled <laughs> semen from what I've seen on the internet. I, uh, I take offense to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have had drink a like sip that? of eggnog <laughs> one time in my life and I was like, <laughs> Ah, uh, Brian, come on, stick stick with the team, man. We're over here on this land. Fuck you, Gary. Eggnog is a shit. It, it's actually kind of gross. I just can't believe you've never heard of like, it. looks like, I mean, when I've been watching the Discovery Channel, you know when they artificially inseminate a cow? You see what they pull out of a bull's dick? What do you That watch? kind of looks like a cup of eggnog. All right, I've got some weird porn. I know, Gary. <laughs> Anything sexual, Gary is all over it. Doesn't matter. No, but I, anyway... Heard... <laughs> it, it just I, I can't believe you voluntarily drink that stuff. I don't look, like it either, Gary. Look, it's not good. I tell you, that, <laughs> it's, look, it's, it's one of the greatest things. I've always loved eggnog. I mean, back when I was a teenager going to Dairy Mart. I can I just every- ask the host here, if we ever do a revolver meetup, can it not be at Beastie's house with a banquet of fucking eggnog and squirrel? Because to be honest, I'm I'm not down for either. I and let me just sacrifice. Say, I would do that just to see you 
eat and drink eggnog and squirrel, just to see your reaction, just to see you crawl let's, out of your own skin. Let's consider our options here, Gary, Gary, before we come into any rash decisions. If we go to Beastly, yes, we are eating eggnog and squirrel. If we go to Wilson's, we're eating Lunchables. <laughs> If you go to my house, we're not eating at all. We're eating out. <laughs> so let's really kind of <laughs> weigh our options here. Where, where, where's these options? I'm down for Look. Wilson's because there's a big bag of weed there. So yeah, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> There's taste yeah, buddy. Extra You're right. Good. You're right. Road trip. Cheetos. I think I want to go to Wilson's house. Yeah. I remember those days. Uh, but this game didn't work out too well because when you jump into the world, you got your drinks. First thing you want to do is kind of hide because you don't want to get killed. But you also don't want to kill anyone because you, you you don't want to get too drunk too soon. And after about 30 minutes, we said, fuck it. Let's just play the game like we normally do. And we ended up getting smashed. And I think it lasted for two and a half days. I woke up out of it, you know, a few days later. And we were still playing Fortnite. We played. And the question was, have you guys ever played any crazy drinking games? And if so, please explain. Uh, I've got. Yeah, I, I could go. Um <laughs> you know, we did the whole uh, Destiny, you know, uh, raid drinking party where you wipe, you drink. If someone dies, you drink. You progress an area, you finish your drink. You know, everyone's m- mostly everyone who's done video game drinking parties has done that. Um, however, I have a funny story. Um, it was House of Wolves era, um, Trials of Osiris, and. What was the name? It was an Earth map in the European Dead Zone. It wasn't the one with the big church. What was it? It was the one Memento. where... What, what's that? Memento. Memento. It was the one where they had a glitch that weekend where sometimes if your feet touch the ground, you just fucking die. Oh, yeah. yeah Memento. And, and that was that weekend. And I was playing with Mustard Tiger and Director. And Director was getting so fucking pissed off because he kept touching the ground and dying. He's like, fuck it. And you could just hear the bottles coming out and all the shot glasses and shit. And, you could hear it. <laughs> and he's like, I'm taking a drink after every round. I'm taking a shot if if we lose a round, if we win a round, and when the game's over. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, yeah, I'm trying to wrap this like flawless run up tonight. Like that'd be great. <laughs> so we get going. We ended up getting flawless. Director is I'm, I man, I feel bad for calling him out for this, but he is blackout, borderline blackout drunk at this point. How long have you been playing at this point? It was like two in the morning my time, so it would have been like closer to three for him by the time we wrapped it. I mean, we do. We had been. He was shit faced. He doesn't fuck around. He's got a massive bar downstairs. Um, oh, so okay, we so wake up. Another trip on the Revolver World Tour is the Rickers' house. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, <laughs> so we wake up the next day, and it's evening around this time. By the time director gets on, it's getting closer, creeping closer to evening, and uh, you know we're oh you know hey what's up you know how's your day going? He's like uh. I woke up and uh, apparently I just started sending a bunch of money on PayPal last night and I have no idea where it went to. Oh, my so God. oh to get, shit. He had to get on PayPal and sort some shit out. He's like, okay, a few of these, I'll let them go through. But yeah, we we were partying, man. That map, dude, it drove us to drink. You touched the ground. How are you supposed to kill anyone if you can't even touch the fucking ground? Like, yeah. Well, just remind me never to play a drink game with you, Wilson. I don't got the money to burn like that shit. What's that's a toxic side effect. Dude, what director very... goes hard. Shit. <laughs> it was all in good fun. Like he got it sorted out and stuff like that. Like it was all in good fun. But yeah, I panic. Whew. I wake up and say, "What? I got what?" Uh, so real quick, Briar, <laughs> Gary, have you guys ever played a drinking game that was crazy or got crazy? Please give us an idea of your past. So we can I have to indeed. I think Briar's probably got the best story, so I'm going to save him till last. He seems like a man who's had a drink. Yeah. Um, but my own. Um, it's actually when, right <laughs> when I was uh, when I was in university, which you guys would call college uh, for some reason. It's called um, college. Maybe not. It was the Centurion, which you guys may have done, which sounds um, like relatively harmless. Um, and it sounds, you know, relatively pedestrian when you when you discuss it or describe it. But when you do it, my God, it will get you blackout, shit face drunk um, within 100 minutes, which is the great thing about it. So you've got an hour and a half before you go out. Well, 100 minutes. This and the the concept of it is that you pour a shot of beer every minute on the minute for 100 minutes, um, which doesn't sound like a lot. You know, a one yes, shot of beer. <laughs> well, OK, maybe you're an intelligent man, but me being... Uh, <laughs> 
but a wee nipper, uh, a novice to the world of drinking, thought a shot of beer, like that's nothing. And, and you know what? It starts off very much that way, where you'll drink a shot of beer, you'll put the shot down. And for the other 50 seconds, you're sitting there thinking, what the, this is ridiculous. You know, we're just talking amongst each other, talking shit. And then, you know, going through after the first 10 minutes, we'd done 10 shots and we thought this is ridiculously easy. Let's start like mixing it up and we're doing vodka orange juice in the downtime. Anyway, come to about the uh, the 50th minute mark when you're on 50 shots of beer in and you realize, well, I've just done 16 cans. Uh, we're still going through. This is, <laughs> this is quite a lot there. You're spending, I'm going to say, the first 45 to 50 seconds after each shot, just trying to hold it down and not vomit. Um, and then you've got 10 seconds of pretty smooth time before you pour another shot in oh, and go through. I've got to say to you, we never actually went out that night. Um, we just sort of got to about minute <laughs> 95. Oh, and just passed out in our own puke. Um, it was <laughs> one of the most magical evenings that I've ever had. Um, I woke up when I actually climbed up um, a vertical radiator that we had in the student accommodation and pulled it off the wall onto myself um, <laughs> in some sort of strange, um, I don't know, sadomasochistic moment. So that, that was an expense that had to be covered. But yeah, um, for any of you young impressionable people out there, uh, it takes 32 cans of beer to complete the Centurion, so go into it prepared and oh, enjoy yeah, those, Christmas. Th those minutes could... turn into seconds by the time you get closer to that hour. You're like, oh, it's already time to do another one. Are you a yeah. drunk climber, Gary? Did you like to climb on shit a lot when you got drunk? I was a drunk climber. Yeah, uh, I, was a, I was a drunk mood. Whenever I got drunk, I always liked to take my clothes off. I had a buddy like that. He was awesome. <laughs> There's just a certain thing I like to sing and I like to take my clothes off. Yeah. But basically, I turn into a cheap stripper. <laughs> we can't wait to drink with you, Gary Diaz. Me oh, too. my God. Really <laughs> I'll just hold the camera. All right. So for me, going... high school in me was all about drinking games because I grew up mm -hmm. in a small town with not shit to do. It was like a 45 minute drive to go to a movie theater. Like it was that kind of town where it was just like there was there wasn't anything but fucking like rural roads and like cow fields and like it was just nothing fucking there so we used Dang. to drink we used to go out in the middle of the fucking woods and drink we had uh ping pong tables that we had like Beer carried pong. four men to bring out to like campsites so that we always had a, a beer pong table we played strip beer pong we played Fucking asshole was a really bad one where asshole. you could basically just force somebody to drink as much as you wanted. Yep. Uh, that was a cruel and unusual fucking drinking game. But the worst drinking game I've ever played and the worst experience I've ever had playing a drinking game was playing chess for shots in college. Every time you lost a piece, you had to do a shot. Of what? Uh, whatever you know, whatever, whatever fucking shitty drinking. goddamn alcohol that you could afford in college, which was probably like bottom of the shelf fucking plastic bottle vodka or something. McCormick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he knows it too. <laughs> so, so I remember sitting there, and the thing about drinking games too that's dangerous is that you don't feel that drunk when you're sitting down. It's not that you stand yeah. up and you get the blood moving that all of oh. a sudden you realize, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> 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 so I remember sitting there and playing two or three games of chess. And I was winning, so I was doing good. I wasn't good at chess, but it was, you know, just like, you know, college kids that were just playing drinking games. And, it was, you know, drinking games were supposed to be in college. In high school, it was drinking game was just get fucked up, have a good time, pass out somewhere. In college, it was like a pregame show, right? It was like, we're just going to have some of this cheap booze before we go to the bar and play, you know, $8 a drink. Yep. You know what I mean? Well, this night, I didn't realize that how many pieces were on the board, for one thing, <laughs> and how <laughs> how terrible these other people were at chess that I kept winning. Because I'm not a chess player. I don't know how to play chess. I think they were fucking with me, maybe. <laughs> Just keep them at the table all fucking night. I was doing shot after shot. I fucking fell out of that chair, man. I fell out of that chair. I don't remember. I'm not a blackout drunk. I don't remember anything about it. It was terrible. It oh, was man. terrible. How do you know it wasn't great? <laughs> I mean, you hear those stories the next day, right? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. I really well, did that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Ch Real quick. chess for shots was a bad, bad idea. That's always fun, though. I used to be I, a dick, though. 
Yeah. <laughs> I never heard of that. I'm happy I didn't grow up with you. Oh, man. You, you, you set somebody at the table to be the asshole. And the only way they can roll out of it, I think they had to roll like it was a dice game, right? Or was it a card game? It was a card game. It was a card game. They had to like have a specific card or something happen on the table that was super rare. Certain but suit. if you were the asshole, yep. anybody at the table could just tell you to drink randomly. Yep. And I would. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You, for any excuse, like they just open their mouth. You'd be like, shut up, asshole, drink. Shut up, asshole, drink. Yeah, because like the person in charge, we did it with like a like a hierarchy. So like you, the president could tell anyone yeah. to drink. And then the person below the president could tell, you know, the rest of the people and so on and so forth. And it just got vindictive as fuck. Yeah. And that card game was stacked so that like you'd have rules in place that kept the hierarchy in place and the, and the peasantry in place as well. So it was really hard to move out of that asshole spot. So you might you should probably spend five games in there and just be drinking your tits off. The president, man, he's young, chipper. He He's drinking at his own pace. The vice president, every once in a while the president fucks with him, but for the most part, they're a team. Like, they're looking <laughs> out for each other, you know? <laughs> they're out there fucking the peasantry like Gary Diaz. Yeah, as I say, that's Gary's game all the way. <laughs> yeah, man, he'd be good at it. Real quick, I, yeah, something I came to my mind. Something came to my mind when you were going through that, Briar. I played beer pong once. Yeah. Uh, Kate and I, on our very first date, imagine this, very first date in Akron, Ohio, all her friends from her high school, you know, they all graduated. She's 19. And uh, I, I, we went out on our first date, went and saw a movie. I took her out to eat, and I took her home to her mother's house. And um, I told her I was going to a little party because the guy who lived on my street at the corner invited me to a party. The party was on 14th Street. I'm finding out Kate's mom lives on 14th Street now. And so I'm t- I'm taking <laughs> check this shit out. I'm taking her home. I see this little house, a red house. She's at her mom's house. My friend's car is directly in front of us. Right in front of us. Not a car space. It's right there. So I pull <laughs> right behind Ryan's car. And I call him. I say, hey man, you you said the party's over here. Where you at? He said, I'm at the gray house. The gray house is directly next to Kate's mother's house. Oh. Right. <laughs> Right now, swear to God, true story. So I, I asked her if she want to come over, you know, hang out. She knew Ryan. Everybody, you know, graduated t- together, my brother. Uh, and so we go over there and, you know, I'm, I'm the older guy. I'm walking around, you know, saying what's up to everybody. But back then I drank a lot. And so they're like, man, get on the beer beer pong with us, man. I start drinking, you know, playing pong. Never played before. I'm fucking, this ain't a video game. And I'm, I'm drinking like crazy. And then I see Dan, the guy who lived across the street from me. I know his mother. And his three brothers. This guy's like six foot four, about 330 pounds. Big fucking dude. And uh, he's getting real he's ramped up. I think he's drinking gin and juice. He said, I'm ready to fucking fight. And I was like, oh, shit, Dan. He's like, I'm ready to fucking fight. And this is Kate's first date with me. This little petite <laughs> woman. And he's like, come on, Brett. Let's go fucking fight, man. Let's fight on boys is what he said. Fight on boys. <laughs> and I was like, what, what does that mean? He said, that means we go outside, we fucking throw down. And then whoever wins, wins. But after that, we're still boys. And I was like, if you want to, Dan, you know, and I swear on the Bible, this is true. Uh, anyway, I go back to the table. I tell Kate, I said, I'm going to go outside and fight my friend. <laughs> and, she, and she was like, who is your friend? Like this guy here, Dan, he's just in the dining room going crazy. We go outside and I'm walking next to him. Everybody's coming out the back of this house. There's probably about 20 people in this house. Everybody's coming out the back and they're coming around to the side to watch what's about to happen. And, you know, my family is a jujitsu family. My brother is Isaiah the Beast Chapman. Look him up on YouTube. Um, And anyway, I told Dan, I said, I'm not going to fight you unless you try to hit me. And he tried to hit me at that very moment. He tried to hit me and he was drunk. And I moved out of his way real easy and I just shot in on his legs. He's a big guy and I slammed him to the ground and as soon as it hit the ground it sounded like a sack of potatoes and he immediately was snoring (laughs) i I, I still i hope they never watch this his head hit the ground boom and he was snoring immediately and his little brother ryan was right there and ryan screamed and ran and i stood up you know, I'm, I got alcohol in my system. I said, man, get your brother. He just got knocked the fuck out. But, <laughs> but, but these are my friends. It didn't really click when you it happened. You guys ever play that game quarters where you got to bounce the quarter off the table and make it lean in a cup? No. I did. I um, I played that one time. I The one time I had a party at my house and my parents went on vacation, we all played quarters. We bounced it in the cup. Yeah. Got away with it scot-free. All really? of a sudden, my mom looked down at the kitchen table and said, 
Did you have a party and a bunch of Where people like quarters dings? on my phone? Fu- it <laughs> fucking dinged up her dude. It's still that same table that's there today. It's kind of fucked up because of us. Oh, I feel bad. No. That's the only game I've ever played where I had to throw up because of pure volume of dr- drinking. My like, stomach was so full <laughs> that I just had to. <laughs> Life or death, literally. <laughs> it's talking ever, right? Damn. All that's right, what do we got? Th- Real quick, the last time I got drunk, um, was with you, Briar, uh, playing games, not drunk, but last time I got drunk playing games, uh, when we were farming for Grasp of Malak. Do you remember Omnigol, that? Omnigol, yeah, yeah. Omnigol, yeah. That bitch yeah. drove us to drink that day. That was a good time, man. That was she good did. stuff. She was good for that. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only time I would ever grind her was when I was drinking. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> like a solid point. I had out so much about you today. All right, so the, the very next topic is do you look down on indie games? Um, I would guess this is a Gary Diaz topic. It just rings true of the elitist. It is one of my topics. So for me, um, for the longest time, I looked down on indie games. I will admit it. Um, I didn't understand them. I didn't know why people cared about them, gave them time and attention. Um, as a younger man, I was all about you know graphics, world, marketing, budget, everything that um, I guess the gaming industry wants me to pay attention to. Um, but as I've aged, uh, like a fine wine, I have found that I'm more looking at compelling narrative um, or artistic statement um, as opposed to just those flashy graphics there. Um, and I find that an indie developer who's not shackled by a studio, um, you know, and, and publisher deadlines, you know, they can just try things that you could never do in a AAA studio. They can try things that are a bit off the wall. And I feel that those lack of limitations tell stories that I'm more interested in. So this year I've played probably 20 indie games and loved most of them, if not all of them. So I wanted to throw that question out there. What do you guys think about indie games? Do you enjoy them as much as I do or as much as your AAAs? And growing up on 8 and 16-bit games, do you think that that's had an influence on your accept- you know, how you accept indie games and what, you know, what you're willing to play? I think you make a good point there. Um, I used to be the same way, man. I, I used to be like, uh, indie games, they're, they're not graphically similar to the games that I'm currently playing on, you know, at the time, if it was PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, stuff like that. Um, I used to really didn't have a big appreciation for them. However, um, when I started playing games like, um, <clears throat> I don't know, off the top of my head, like Fez. You know, Fez was a fantastic indie game. It was really good. It took forever to get out, but when it did, it was a fantastic game. Um, but I feel like I have more of appreciation for those games because I did grow up in the 8-bit and 16-bit era, back where you did have to use a lot of imagination when you're playing games or, <clears throat> you know, they, where it was really just about narrative and gameplay, nothing else, you know, and they were just, that was the game, but... Yeah, I love them a lot. And I, th- I think one of my favorite was it um, Shovel Knight. Oh, it's so good. Like, such a good game. The soundtrack. The... I can never get... I've bought that game two or three times. I can really? never get into it. Yeah. I think I oh, bought dude, it for I... the Vita. I bought it for the... Possibly... Is it not for the Switch? I might have bought it for the Switch. Mm-hmm. It is it on is Switch. It is on I, Switch. It's on I, Wii U as well. I think my Vita copy probably came out came with the PlayStation 4 copy. Is that possible? Maybe. Like, I feel it like I own that in, like, three different places. And I... Every time I boot it up, I'm just like, like I get it, but I don't get it. Mm, man, I loved it. I thought it did. Uh, it reminded me a lot of like, um, you've got like the Super Mario Three Overworld where you're going around, but it had a uh, big uh, like Ducktales NES vibe where oh for sure screwed with the with the pogo bounce on the cane and stuff like that with your shovel, yeah. and that was one of my favorite NES games of all time, which also had a killer fucking soundtrack, but. They, they're great. I think it's awesome. Like Gary said, they're not shackled with all these big company restraints and deadlines. And, you know, this is what you got to do in microtransactions and all this shit. It, it's cool to kind of take a step away from the hustle and bustle of AAA titles and look at someone's like creative expression through a video game and have a great time. And they're usually cheap, too. Yeah, they usually are cheaper. For me, I don't look at indies is a bad thing uh there are just so many indies it's hard for me to focus so usually when an indie that's noteworthy comes around through word of mouth you hear about it those are the ones i look at games like little nightmare i spent a lot of time playing this year that's an indie and it had a great soundtrack and it was something different one of the things about indies that usually i shy away from is not knowing 
and knowing that so many indie games come out don't really do it for me as a gamer. So for me, I like to kind of know which party I'm going to versus walk into one and not know what's going on. And so for me over the years, many indies, I've walked into a, a situation or a, a video game mechanic or a world that just didn't suit my particular taste. But of course, there are those indies that you play uh, that just knock your socks off. And so for me, it it usually has to go through a few phases in the public. It has to go through a few phases so that that notoriety is, is heard so that people could actually hear that this is an awesome game. It's something you need to look at for me to actually notice it. Because if you took a table and put every indie that came out in 2017 on it, and you had to play them, you just wouldn't have enough time. It's so and, hard know, these... to judge quality based on screenshots, especially with yeah. indie games. That it, You're right. It's really hard to weed through the chaff. So you have to wait. You know, um, Games like Ukulele, uh, that's an indie. You know, It, it mm. seems like a AAA type of experience, but it's technically an indie. Uh, and, See, and for me, I don't yeah. know. For me, Yuka and Hellblade and Little Nightmares and Child of Light, again, whilst they're indies, I don't, I don't know if they're they're blurring the line between what is an indie and what's a AAA game because the publishers that are backing them are larger publishers, and the aesthetic of them, the crew that are working on them, are slightly different. I'm thinking of things, um, you know, like like Kingdom New Lands or like Undertale that's popped out recently. Things that are you know, almost, ex- you know, very much like, or Stardew Valley, you know, which was a one man mm-hmm. operation um, at Chucklefish. Like there's, you know, for me that that's the type of thing that I'm thinking of when I think indie game. Um, and that to me feels like an experience that I can't get, you know, to me, um, what you mentioned, their little nightmares feels like a cut down AAA title. It doesn't feel like an indie in its heart. So do you ever sort of pick up the ones that are the, the, the core, you know, what, miles away from an, from a triple A or is that just not in your your preferred gaming library personally I I go for what I know you know if I'm going to go buy a game it has to be something I know about one of you guys has to have told me about it I have to have heard uh, you know about the reviews on, on the internet or read somewhere I don't normally see a game or see a trailer and say this looks like something I need to play unless I know a little bit about it I guess it just comes with getting older and, and managing your your money and wanting Time. to put Time yeah, you want to you want to you want to put your your effort into something that you feel like you're going to get something back from. And I know a lot of these games, you know, uh, Super Meat Boy. That's a that's that was an indie, wasn't it? When it came out, yeah. those type of games are great. But the reason that I have them, I own them, is because I heard about them and, and it was renowned. You know, people all speak very highly of these type of experiences. So, like I said, there's just so many indies out there, and I know there's tons that that exist that none of us have ever touched. But yeah. the the promotion is the issue. You know, it needs to 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 be out there for us to hear about it. Well, the ones they that are successful, just... they they get that word of mouth buzz, and they're the ones that I end up checking out. You know, same here. I, you know, Hellblade is one of those. Is it, it got? I would have never looked at that game based on you know anything and you guys that they told showed me about promotionally. It. I would have never taken a look at that game until I heard about like the psychological stuff that they were doing and the word of mouth it got. Um, uh, Ori in the Blind Forest is, uh, you know, oh. they, again, it blur, blurs the line. I think Gary is yeah. is kind of right about that. Um, but for me, it's always it's the, the ones that I gravitate to, they have to have a hook that speaks to me very much, like, directly to me. Otherwise, I'll just be like, well, you know, it might be fun for two hours. I'll spend 10 bucks on it, 15 bucks on it, and then I'll kind of leave it below. You know, uh, this war of mine, I, you know, I thought it was great. I didn't like. I didn't love it like, you know. Other people said. Uh, you know, I don't know. It. It's so weird because, like, you want to support these guys that are making these like really yeah. like focused products, but at the same time, they don't offer like that, that immersive experience that I'm really looking for. Like when I buy, yeah. when I when I jump into, I I meant to play Witcher for about an hour this morning, and I ended up <laughs> just playing it all fucking day i saw <laughs> again. that again I, saw that. I was creeping <laughs> and uh you know like uh the newest assassin's creed like th- those are the kind of games i love destiny those are the games like kinds of games i love because i could spend untold hours in there exploring the world exploring the story 
you know, grinding for loot, you know, playing with my friends in Destiny, which I, you know, like a lot of games don't let you do. A more focused experience like Hellblade, which is fantastic, and actually I, th I think was nearly a life-changing experience, it's so hard for them to hook me because I know that it's just going to be, you know, a four to six hour experience, an eight hour experience where it's, you know, it's not going to be like that, that game that I just, it, it's not going to become my main game. Like, yeah, uh, it's something you can't go back to. It's a, a, a singular experience type of game. Uh, and I feel the same way, Briar. Gary Wilson. Um, yeah, I mean, real, oh, go ahead, Gary. No, it's cool. I was just saying that for me, that's what I like about them. So what's drawing me to Indies is that I get that quick fix. I get that story, that narrative, that experience that the developer wanted to communicate. And I don't feel that I have to be married to it in the same way that I would a game like Destiny or World of Warcraft, where, you know, I'm going to spend the next X hundred hours on this game and I'm going to have to grind and I'm going to have to do this, that and the other. Like you can do it in an indie so like stardew valley is the perfect example of a game that is as open or as long or as short as you really want it to be um you know the game itself is just an allegory for you you know just literally checking it all in and going out into the wilderness um and there's lots of games like that in the indie space minecraft is the ultimate indie that has then become you know more than the sum PUBG, of its parts i feel like is a yeah but, but oh yeah, PUBG to an extent is is an indie in its in its you know core design, but then has has again grown. But yeah, for me, I don't know. It's it's just an interesting article because I never paid them any mind, um, and then something changed in me, and I kind of uh, I don't know if it's if it's like hipster in me, but I kind of I grew tired of all these AAA games because I felt like they're all largely speaking trying to do the same thing they're trying to be bigger than the last one better graphically than the last one you know tell a, a, a you know have more celebrities in their story but i feel like do you need all of those things in there to be a good game or can you just can you no. get immersed from a, a no, quality experience or story you don't need all that stuff to be a good game but i like to have a game that i can come back to and like have a like like the witcher 3 where i can just get absorbed into that world and for some reason, it's hard for indies to pull that off for me. Like Stardew Valley, Valley for me, I can see a lot of the appeal there, but just like the core, the core conceit of like you know, like getting away from it all and like just starting a farm and going out and you know doing your own thing, it just was boring to me. Like the just the whole like base premise was it didn't speak to me, so I just didn't I didn't stay with it. So, so there's so many different like pieces that have to fall in place for me to really like come back to it and play it. That well, it's hard. I feel like for uh, indie to, to really create that game. The same way that PUBG is a different type of game from Fortnite, they're a different type of gamers. And, and Gary's one of those people who really he he seeks this indie kind of experience. And there are also gamers who seek the AAA experience. I don't mind either one. I just like to know that I'm putting my money and my time into something. That I can depend on. Sometimes uh, I'm perfect, in the movie perfect. for a for a, in the mood for a movie, which is mm -hmm. just like a quick experience with right. you know. Same here. Sometimes I want to like get into a series like Peaky Blinders. I've been watching lately. Where, oh, so good. You know, I've got I've got hours and hours to spend with these characters and get like totally involved in that world. You know, I won't believe you're really into Peaky Blinders until I see that haircut, Briar. Just do it. Oh, One I'm of these. About it. The only problem is it just kind of like falls apart toward the back here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some indie games can pull me in. Um, but their story, I really enjoyed. There was a cool little indie game on Steam called uh, Costume Quest. I don't know if you guys have ever heard yeah. of that. It's, it's a uh, it's a dollar right now on the Christmas sale, and it's like a little RPG where some kids go out on Halloween, and you know, like their costumes are like you know their character and their abilities, and they can like morph into almost like a big like Transformer esque like robot, and it's like a turn turn based yeah Voltron like a turn based RPG so to speak and then you have a game like uh mount your friends yes no story no nothing to pull me in but let's let's see how many how much time do i got well, there's on this? something pulling me in there <laughs> there is there is i've got <laughs> i mean i've got five hours on that game you know what i mean which isn't a lot like in the scope of like say if you're comparing it to like destiny or something like that but for an indie that's quite a bit and it's literally just yeah flicking dudes up in the air and watching their junk spin around. You know what I mean? Like, it is funny. Sounds though. fun. 
Is there it a four player? Dude. Is there a four player for that? I don't know. I I know I there's there two is. player. I don't know. We might have to look into that. I mean, it's it, it's just that the stories. Look at Friar's eyes. <laughs> I don't know. For me, for me, it's the stories that you get, and there's a couple um, of, of examples. But like, Doki Doki, I've spoken about mm. at length on this show, and like, I think more and more people are getting, you know, to understand why Doki Doki Literature Club is such a good game. You know, the visual novel itself, kind of the meta game, the game within a game. Is it a good game it's, or a good story? Uh, both, really, because it it does things that I, I can't go into what it does because it would spoil the premise of the game. But it does things that you could only do on PC for one. And you can't do it in any other game. It's very unique in the way it tells a story. And actually, it's been subsequently found out that the game itself, in its entirety, is actually just a promotion for a game that Team Salvato are bringing out in 2018. Amazing. So <laughs> it's it's mind blowing the layers that are put into that game. But Genius. I mean, that's that's one of the games that I thought was good. And then another indie game that I played, that I just got a shout out. And this is just to give you an idea of, of the, the breadth of the stories that you get in this that you do not get in AAA titles. Finding Paradise, it's called. It, it, there's also another similar story to it with To the Moon. And it's about these uh, two doctors who work in a uh, kind of end-of-life care treatment centre. And um, it's very similar to Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind oh, in that shit. as people are uh, approaching death, they enter the minds of the people and they implant happy memories and go back and change parts of their life to make their life happier so that these people uh, who are approaching end of life die happy based on the influence and impact these doctors have had throughout it. Can I get that, My, like, now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's, it's, that story was touching and moving and great, and the full game was about five and a half, six hours long. Prom night? Oh, it was fantastic. Box. Let me tell you all about how good prom night was. <laughs> Perfect. Let me just say this, Gary. And you kind of answered your own topic in a way. When I think about all the... I showed you I downloaded uh, Doki Doki. Uh, and I mean, look at all the games I've bought since you talked yeah. to me. Right? Yeah. Um, you guys mentioned Hellblade to do a sacrifice to me. We had we did a show. You guys talked about it. Uh, and I, I was intrigued. You know, and this has happened numerous times over the last six months. Really, I think that's how these indies get out there. People people talk about them. It's word of mouth. They tell their friends about a, a new kind of experience. And if it suits that person's fancy, they go to Steam and pick it up or they buy it on their console. I think that's really the best way that these indie games can see real sustainable success is either by advertising, which would make it seem like a triple A experience or through word of mouth by players. It's got to be working, right, Beasley? Because you see more and more huge, like, guys that work for huge development companies like Bungie, like, you know, like EA, like whoever, like, just kind of, okay, Break I'm going to go make yeah. my own thing now. And yeah. we only got to sell, you know, we only got to sell 80,000 units to make, you know, the last All two years' back, efforts yeah. worth it. Um, and if it becomes a breakout hit, then I'm rich for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. All right, so moving on to the next Revolver topic. Oh, I, I think we already covered that one. We did. Moving on odd, again. Odd, odd, odd jobs. This ought to be fun. What are some of the strangest odd jobs you've ever had? Strangest. Who'd like to get started? Well, let me just say this, and, and I talked to you guys pre-show a few weeks ago. I grew up in my, my father's candy business. And believe it or not, uh, from the time I was five, I actually worked for my dad a until I was 21. And uh, as I became a teenager, we weren't paid to do this. We had to work for my dad between five and seven hours per day. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, we'd be out working at 9 a.m. and wouldn't come home Hustling until that 9 candy. Mm. It, 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 it was a very lucrative business, Briar. And, and I guess... If you put something powerful in the wrong person's hands, it can become a tool for evil. And really, that's what happened to our childhood. My dad had a, a bunch of kids. Wait, 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 wait. If you put candy in the wrong person's hands. I told you, peanut tool. brittle and strippers, man. Peanut brittle and strippers. <laughs> Do you not remember this story? Yeah, I, I, I uh, would be out here in, in the Georgia streets peddling like a little drug dealer as a kid. And I'd run up to people in parking lots and I'd have cases of candy. And we had to sell this stuff. We constantly were given arbitrary... Uh, goals, goals that we found out as adults didn't really exist. They were just there to artificially 
motivate us <laughs> to make us do better. And our friends and neighbors would all work for my father. Of course, they all got paid. We never did. So it was a very uh, demeaning life growing up, believe it or not. This is some crazy shit. Could have been worse. But I, I don't know, bro. It could have uh, been an altar boy. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Gary would have Gary would have made it. Uh, he been all right. The but best boy. best three that, years of my life. That was a, a crazy job, and and you stayed too, Gary. You fuck. Uh, but that I was just a crazy got job. To overdub the entire of Beastly story with Fifty Cent Candy Shop, I think it would really improve the cadence of it. So if someone could edit that and put that, that in was, as a backing track. That was a very fucked up job. But my very first job that I had outside of my dad's business. I was actually a janitor. So I was living in Ohio and uh, I I uh, was in a high school, a middle school program called Occupational Work Adjustment, OWA. And they sent us out, you know, these 13 year old kids to find jobs. And most kids had parents who had businesses. My mom was on welfare. She didn't have shit. I want to know so where I, you were a janitor. This is the, the part of the custodian, story. Custodian, Dick. That I, <laughs> Listen, I, I want to know where you were pushing that mop. Was it, was it in a high school? Was it in, it was in a prison? It was in, it was in my school because was, I went out. Wait, wait, wait. I you went were out, thirteen I went, and you were yes. a janitor at your I own school. Shit. I did the same shit. For my How do you school. think my self esteem is so high? I actually man. did I the same shit. shit. <laughs> I didn't do some shit. You sweeping down the hallway and you see a bunch of bitches in the classroom say, "Oh, there you go, right there," and just start throwing shit into the hall. You smile at them. You say, "I'm making money, bitch." And keep sweeping. I actually did the same thing. Wilson, I'm surprised that, like three of us on the podcast actually did this. I worked for the janitors, but I, I only worked with them during the summer. They were my summer job. And I yep. would do I would paint classrooms. I yeah, would I did. wax floors. I would oh my God. Uh, like all sorts of shit like that. Like so it wasn't like the wait, day wait, wait, to wait. day. Sorry. Was your janitor Mr. Miyagi? What the fuck were you doing? <laughs> what, you were waxing on, earning, waxing off, and painting. I was, off and I was, wax, I was wax, earning some summer wax. cash, man. Like my my superintendent actually <laughs> called me out of the Wait. blue one day. In the whooping crane. I know. At what point in the summer did you learn to do that crane kick? Was it in the uh, first? <laughs> Listen, I, I made my first video game purchase. I, I bought. Don't Mr. Miyagi, I, I do not appreciate Gary's tone when addressing Mr. Miyagi in this yeah. way. Mr. <laughs> Miyagi was a very special man. And just because you had troubles with adults in your younger days does awesome not mean boy. that we all had all these poor influences. It's fine. Mr. Miyagi was the best janitor Connecticut's ever seen. It's fine. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, man. Real talk. That job taught me a lot, you know, Uh about swallowing your pride and understanding that you got to do what you got to do for a check. And I was a kid, but I was very proud of of that check I got every two weeks. Yeah. My, my mom was proud of me. She knew I was going to be somebody. She said, son, when you pick up that trash bag, I want you to think about me. I said, I will, mom. My first and job it, was actually working at a dog kennel, cleaning the kennels. Like, literally, I was shoveling shit my first job. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. My mom and said, that Don't dog, spend- that kennel lost my fucking dog. <laughs> We went on vacation. Yeah, it was like a little uh, a terrier kind of mix. They said it climbed a fucking eight foot fence and like took off. <laughs> was it half raptor? Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> lost a raptor. I've had some crazy fucking jobs. Wilson, you want to tell us your story, man? Yeah. So much like you guys, I actually worked for my school uh, as my first job. It was during the summertime. They had us doing whatever, cleaning floors, cleaning lockers. Luckily, luckily there was no students there or whatever. But I remember that was the first time I got to sit. I remember like the big buffer that they had, the thing oh, that would yeah. spin and like wax the floor. I actually got to sit on that thing while it uh-huh. went, which was awesome. I had really <laughs> cool supervisors or whatever. And uh, half the time we just got to go fuck off and do whatever we wanted and get paid money. So. Yeah. Yeah, my, that was my, awesome. My janitors were pretty cool in that way too, and I had it in with the janitors for like the rest of my school. Dude, like, that's for, leading me to my next story. Yeah, um, they, I got in with uh, my all the custodians there to where they yeah. were buying us beer come high school, oh. so we were getting the beer hookup. So it was kind of weird. So like, there was one final week of summer vacation left, and they gave us the option: you can either stop working here, 
or you could work the extra week and we'll pay you extra money. And I was like, fuck that. I want my summer vacation. I want the rest of my vacation. No, I don't want the money. <laughs> I want time to spend that money. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was like, man, I, I really shouldn't. I should just take the rest of the summer off. And I'm hanging out with my friends. And a couple of my buddies also did the same thing. And they decided to stay and work for the week. Well, they got caught smoking weed in the school that day during the lunch break. <laughs> In the teacher's lounge of all places Man. to to light up. So oh, like I was kind of happy. Started showing up. Well, yeah, it was actually well, it was a uh, it was the not cool custodian that busted him out. But uh, uh, I I just thought it was kind of ironic. Yo, that, your like, life sucks when you're the not cool custodian. Hell yeah, <laughs> it's cool. the bottom of the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, we so, got Jerry. He's fucking wicked cool. He'll buy you beer. We got Bill. He's got fucking weed. And we got Tony. He's not cool. He's not cool. <laughs> it's funny you said Jerry because that was totally the dude. One of the dude's names was Jerry. Uh, yeah, there's always a us, Jerry. It's always a Jerry. Uh, but oh, I was just like, God. damn, it's a good thing I quit because I probably would have been there with him that day. And the teacher's not smoking weed because why not? But uh, so that was an interesting first job. Um, after that, all my jobs were pretty routine. Like uh, I worked at like uh, I was a sandwich artist at Subway. Ooh. <gasps> oh, yeah. I like how they say sandwich how, artists. How the mighty have fallen. Now your favorite food is Lunchables. It's true. Well, <laughs> you I were a sandwich artist. Yeah, that's right. I allegedly <laughs> took an entire roll of stamps. So that's why I don't work there what anymore. Um, what, what sandwich do you allegedly. think best defined your work? What, what sort of that? art do you think expressed you the best? What sandwich really expressed your art? What period was it? I'd say anytime someone picked the Italian herbs and cheese bread and just oh. made like a nice colorful palette. You know what I mean? You put like banana peppers for your yellows and mm. lettuce for your greens. I love and the banana pepper. Some onions That's in there for some of your purple cooler tones. Yeah. I mean, you know, Monet had his summer period and Wilson had his cheese and herb period apparently. So I did. Kept the herb, kept the herb. I did. Did you know how awesome it was working at Subway in high school, man? Like to free sandwiches and, and um, <clears throat> allegedly a roll of stamps. <laughs> You know, like <laughs> I had a buddy who was working at a convenience store in high school, and he stole fucking rolls of uh, uh, scratch off tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's he, got, he got fired, notes. but he never got caught. Mm-hmm. Right, like they know who did it, but they didn't know who did it, or they didn't have proof. You know, which oh, yeah. takes me into my um, best odd job, I'd say, or growing up job. Um, I worked in a paper store, um, a news agents, we would call them. You may call them a local store. I don't know what the best word for it is. You know, where you buy just general uh, candies. A and, yeah, and kind of like a newsstand. We, in, in the UK, we're, we're far more uh, civilized, so we have them in actual stores. You know, like a convenience store, let's call it. Yeah, sure. And um, they've got paper boys. Um, and you come in in the morning and you load up and you get given, you know, you've got four or five blocks and you deliver the papers to these blocks. Paper. Now, what I found, paper boy, I, I, again, I don't know how much culturally carries over, so I have to mansplain you everything when I speak to you. You are wearing a Super Nintendo shirt, so it does There we go. Sense. So I was a paper boy. <laughs> um, but what I found was being a paper boy was like the ultimate cover for just robbing the store blind every morning. Um, because <laughs> what they do... Is they give you a list and say, these are all the streets that you cover. Go out into the store and pick out the papers and sort the papers. Um, but do you know how many like candy bars you can fit and how much pornography you can stash in the middle of these papers in your bag? Um, so, you know, this, this store, they'd probably, you know, whatever they paid me, I made four and five times over in illicit pornography, which I'd sell on to my classmates and candies, which I'd sell during the break times um, and undercut the school canteen prices. So I made quite a good living there from just robbing this poor Mr. Yogi Patel's store blind. Um, <laughs> Damn, Gary. Gentle, gentle little Indian man uh, Yogi. who never Not suspected Yogi. me. Yogi it's Patel. Uh, you got to like do Yogi you, like that. Sounds like you might have a corrupt bone or two in your body, Gary. And you say you're in banking now, huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty cool story. <laughs> I will Pretty... only work places that I can rob people blind, let's just say that. <laughs> or, or steal their smut. Damn. If you've got pornography or chocolate bars to steal, I will take both. 
<laughs> they're getting you in the comments. Yeah, get Gary's ass. Of course he's so important. <laughs> You don't expect anything less from Mr. Diaz. Well, yeah. it was difficult. In those days, we didn't have the internet. So getting a dirty mm -hmm. magazine was like... It was a pretty load. big deal, yeah. And we, we once found a bag of porn in a park uh, bush that someone had chucked, <laughs> like a carrier bag full of porn. And that was like... That kept us going for at least six months. But I was supplying pristine... Used porn. It was, like, it was like finding the holy grail right there. It was a nasty tattered these, cup, but it just meant so much like, to Gary and his pornographic culture. I kid you not, these were some hairy bush ridiculous like nineteen. Hey man, don't don't, don't hate on the hair, man. Don't hate on the hair. Some of us still like that shit. You see, what I was selling, this was pristine, this was still sealed. This came with the extra sort of infills and pamphlets that you got that came with it. This was legitimate stuff. So I'd put that into a, you know, a 20 cents newspaper um, and then sell it for like five pounds English, which was like seven dollars back then in like 19, must have been 1998, 1997. And that's right, good You're money. selling it like an underage crowd that couldn't get it normally. So you could how many exactly. charge. How many pence is that? How many pence? <laughs> The pence is a legitimate form of currency, and all the English you. people in the chat will yeah. back us up. Stop making shit up, Gary. I don't believe you, and I looked it up pence. on Wikipedia, and there's a lot of your wording in that Wikipedia article. Like, you wrote that and then tried to sell us this line of bullshit that yeah. is pence. Quit hating on our vice president. <laughs> My points, man. Pence, get out of here. It's pence. My, uh... My mother had me working at an early age. When I was 10 years old, I started working at the kennel down the street, you know, shoveling shit. I, I started working at an office store. I worked at a at a uh, racket club. I ran the sweeper, and the, the handle of the sweeper was literally eye level for me. So it was like this machine that, like, it it swept up the fuzz of tennis balls that was left on the court. <laughs> it, was, it was literally, like, eye serious? level. Yeah, I used to just push that thing, and then... So I had jobs, 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 and it was good. My mother, you know, it, it brought in a extra, extra money, but it also kept me. I was she was a single mother. It kept me out of the house because I idle hands were pretty rough for me. I, yeah. you know, ADD. I would just cause shit all the time. So she, you know, she she got me jobs. The best one though was after I turned sixteen, I got a job as a pizza delivery boy, and it was to date, including YouTube and Twitch. The best job I've ever had because I drove around my hometown delivering hot happiness to people. <laughs> and basically anytime I wanted a free pizza, I could just grab one because like these pizzas were just flowing off. And if I wanted like a custom one, I would just add the ticket in, you know, to the pizzas being made, grab that pizza and like deliver it to a friend. You know, I, I knew a couple friends were hanging out. Great. I'll stop by. I'll be there in an hour. I'll deliver a pizza. We'll have a couple of beers. I'm off on, on the road again. You know? Oh, my God. It was the best job ever. I did pizza so much delivery fun. as well, and I really loved it, man. I got to uh, – it was a really small little town. Yeah. So he's like, here's your charge in town. Here's your charge if it's certain miles out of town. He's like, if anybody else calls and wants a pizza, you get to – if they're outside of that zone, you get to negotiate. So I could tell someone Ooh. that lived 25 minutes away, yeah, sure, I'll – deliver your pizza but you gotta tip me like 20 bucks yeah you know what i mean and if they wanted the pizza bad enough they'd do it you know and depending on like the weather or just how lazy i was feeling for the amazing. day amazing so your target audience was stoners who were desperate yeah. at that point yeah. there they're just like yeah Dude, just bring the pizza the <laughs> yeah, high what, the people i like to call as the high tip well <laughs> the high they really do they might not realize how much they're tipping but they tip well. <laughs> yeah, if they're high enough, you can just grab the money right out of their hands. They don't even fucking say a word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the so dude had... the question is, when you were when you were a pizza delivery boy, um, how many times did you fuck with people's pizzas who were just like complete a holes to you? Oh. Never once. Never don't once. I never you. once never, fucked with don't somebody's answer, please, food. Please don't answer that. I wanted I wanted to smack the fucking pizza out of this one dude's hand that tipped me two cents. Like I legit was like, I'm already put my two weeks into this job. And this guy was like, oh, keep the change. And I was like, you realize it's two cents, right? And he's like, yeah, I know exactly how much it is. And I so badly almost reached into this man's home and smacked the pizza right onto his floor. <laughs> oh, you did it, <laughs> Not even kidding. But I don't even know if that's like borderline some form of like assault to, <laughs> to someone who, you know, cross that bridge can't you get to it, Wilson. Cross the you know bridge. I'm saying? You, ass did you assault this man's pizza? Oh. No, I was just trying to help him hold it. <laughs> 
Yeah, you could I, have just casually lent in, grabbed it, taken a bite out of one slice, and just put it back. That's the that's, best way to deal with that. That's the play right there. 16-year-old me would have loved to know that. That's true. <laughs> Damn, if I could go back in If time, I could man, go back, right? Mm-hmm. I'd have I fucking taken a, a big old bite out of that guy's pizza and been like, no, I don't need a tip. You're good. <laughs> Sorry. I masturbated on it before anyway. So. <laughs> there you go. That's the thing. Did you not put any Caesar dressing on any pizza? I don't believe that for one minute. Oh, God. I know I'd do it. It would be like Russian. It. it would be like Listen, Russian guys, roulette as well. I'd I do it and then shuffle the pizza. Don't do this to me. <laughs> like, pizza, pizza guys, right p- you don't have anything to worry about from pizza guys. Pizza guys are like the happiest dudes driving around. They're listening to music. They're getting paid to just fucking drive around in their fucking beat ass car, which they're happy to fucking have because they're probably 17 years old. You give them a five dollar tip. It's you know it, their day is made. Tip your pizza guy, man. Tip your pizza guy, and he will be you will be the first stop because he goes out there. He leaves that pizza place with like you know five, six, seven pizzas. But if he knows you're a big tipper, he's coming to your house first. You get that yeah. pizza hot. You just over, it's like I just took the red pill, Briar. I, you know, seeing the perspective of a pizza delivery guy, actually hearing it come out of your mouth has completely changed my if, life. If Wilson, Kate, bring me a 20. That, if Wilson ever I saw mean, that guy again, like on his list, that address again, that pizza's getting there cold. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless you're in the UK, in which case, tip no one ever. Because we don't. <laughs> You it's don't? great. We don't. We don't tip. We have uh, a much more relaxed society. There's no pressure on us. Like a guy can walk to the door with your pizza, and you can give him a smile, take that shit out of his hands, and close the door, and he won't think anything of it. I bet that job's Genuine not true. as good. It sounds like a nation of elitists. In high school, man, tips. Like you make a lot of money in tips, and you're driving around. Like it was a great job. That was the best it's time. an American thing. I, I felt fleeced. Every restaurant I went to, they're like 24% not included. You're like, what the fuck? That is some cheeky ass when shit. When I went like, to London, just... I went to London in like, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago. I was tipping fucking everybody, and everybody was fucking smiling at me for doing it. They're like, <laughs> yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Would you like another beer? <laughs> fuck yeah, man. Here, have another beer. As the Let's British have away. confirmed in the chat, you were just some crazy American with too much money. No one tips in the UK. We just don't tip. Don't expect it. The only time wow, I got a tip turned away was when I was in Ireland. Really? Mm-hmm. I suppose it's part of the EU, though. Yeah, just Europeans generally don't tip. I mean, it's different. If you serve at a restaurant in a, ni- well, I mean, a nice restaurant, not like your standard restaurant, but a nice restaurant, maybe you'll sling them like 5 10%. But like, you guys, the Waffle House want 25%. It's ridiculous. I can't believe it. No, not can't 25. believe it. That's fucking crazy. No, Waffle House, you better give them 3%. They all they're they're trailer trash usually, or uh, wow, wow. In- inbred Dude, people all night. Listen, with the listen, stereotypes listen, this, so listen. Toxic. This guy, so toxic. Work, I, I, you better hear me out. <laughs> Let me take that back and say it this way: I work with a guy named Jerry. Talk to me about this one anecdotal person that you know who works at Waffle House, and then he has ruined spread it this for me. knowledge across all oh. the people who've ever worked at a Waffle House. Listen, look, just let me tell you the story. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry goes in the bathroom at work and takes a hearty shit and doesn't wash okay. his hands. And he'll come in there and he'll be scratching his butt walking around. This is our shipping director. And he brags about working at Waffle House. So I don't know anyone else who works at Waffle House. So whenever I hear people talk about right. Waffle House, I'm right. about Jerry. I am now Jerry. Your Jerry story has convinced me that all people who work at Waffle House or eat waffles are probably miserably human oh, beings. I love waffles. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck went to you, the Jerry, house. and fuck you, Waffles. Jerry's a piece of shit. <laughs> I went to the <laughs> Waffle House it. in August, and I spent $2, and I got unlimited coffee <laughs> and a waffle. I can't believe that. That's The value proposition is crazy. Unlimited. I could have sat there the rest of my days until I died on this earth for that $2 investment and drunk coffee forever. Infinity. Unlimited coffee but and no a waffle for $2. It, for a reason. I was impressed. I, 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 I want to see you go for the Guinness Book of World Records. And see I was how much coffee. coffee. That's what I want to know. I was, I was the coffee. I was the coffee. <laughs> Surprisingly good. Yeah. I was impressed, yeah. Waffle House. Jerry, Jerry was having a good day that day. 
I, I, must have washed his hands before he mixed that, that pot up with his hands. His hands <laughs> I sampled yes. some of the finest <laughs> American cuisine. I went to the Waffle House one day. I went to the Olive Garden. I went to Ponderosa. Um, you know, any, anywhere that's a, a fine American establishment, I thought yeah. I'd uh, check out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, if it's if it's less than ten dollars for a main, I'm there. Sounds good, Gary. We got one final topic for Revolver Live episode 22, and I think this is going to be a doozy. We're going to go out with a bang on today's episode. All right, so oh, the just final... like I did on that pizza. Mm. <laughs> the final topic. I don't know this topic is, but the topic is guilty pleasures. Whose topic is this? This is Ooh, mine. Wilson's. Oh, Wilson, go. Let it go. All right. So when the wife is at work or the kids are away, I find myself indulging in guilty pleasures. Whether it's Gary Snap, yeah, you know, whether it's <laughs> Gary snapping panties and gal gun, Briar watching Golden Girls, or Beastly shaking his booty to Beyonce's All the Single Ladies, or even me drawing dicks in our Google talk, our Google Document section. What are That's some of your guys' favorite? <laughs> what are you guys? What are you guys' uh, some of your guilty pleasures? And it's time to let it all hang out, guys. I'll so. run. I'll run down mine because I was looking at this topic a few minutes ago, and I just. This is be quick. I don't need to embellish or talk about anything. Natural Life is a YouTube channel that I watch, and it it has a girl from Cambodia in Cambodia cooking their native foods in the middle of a field. And so she'll start a fire. She'll put some coals in it. That could have gone anywhere with the way you started that. Sentence. It's called Natural Life. It's on YouTube. It's, it's called Natural pleasure. Life. It's this girl in All Cambodia right. and. <laughs> <laughs> can we get the, sorry, before the, before the story continues on, can we get the age of the Cambodian girl, please? Just so that I know. Oh, no, 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 she's a YouTuber. She, <laughs> okay. she doesn't say sugar. She says suga. And Kate and I really love that. Anyway, I also love watching rabid <laughs> animals wait, wait. on YouTube. This is Your your guilty pleasure when your wife is away. When your wife is away. You just said she watches it with you. No, Kate watches it by herself. She, she watches it when I'm at work. I don't watch it when I'm at work. There's hundreds of videos. We watch them all the time. Beastly, I, you got to dig deeper than this, man. Dig deeper. Beastly, man. You're the, okay, you're, the type of, you're the type of man who masturbates to photos of his wife in a bikini on you. That's it. No, she you didn't have to, anything like, on. You need to go to, like, the, the darkest depths. No, of, I don't, like, Gary. You try to sink the, the fucking darkest depths. This is the Come man. On. We spent 12 hours. Get <laughs> honest with us. Get we honest 12, with us, Beastly. 12 hours on Gal Gun I'll within the first 24 <laughs> hours of voting. I'm, I'm letting you guys know how fucked up I am. I watch videos of rabbit animals attacking people. Just nasty animals. I watch vicious dogs getting shot by the police. For some reason, it gives me a sense of peace and calm. Right? <laughs> I watch Dr. Pimple Popper Wait. on YouTube. Oh, God. Watch... My wife watches that shit. It's fucking yes. horrifying. Dr. <laughs> <laughs> I watch Dr. Pimple Popper, and I love seeing lymphomas and Melia and and and... <laughs> All this shit getting squeezed out of people's faces. Oh, it's gross. It is so gross. It's, sometimes my cat, like I have a cat. Her name is Harley. She's broken almost every blind in my house. She'll break off five or six in each corner of every window so she can fucking look outside from every angle of the house. Yo, all so, you got to do is pull the blind up like an inch or two so the cat can see out. I don't want her to see out. And so now I watch videos of cats having um, uh, getting spayed and neutered, and I make her sit with me and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Beastly, you are a fucking sick individual. <laughs> that's the thing that I watch, my true guilty pleasure is watching The Office, Steve Carell. And I watch that show over and over and over again until the day I die. I think it's the greatest show ever. And that's it. It's me in, that's me balled up in a nutshell. And you guys can unpack that however you like. <laughs> Wilson, what do you got? Um, okay, so like music wise, I gotta I gotta admit it, man. I uh I like Katy Perry's music. Nice. I can't help it. She's she's nice to look at, she has a good voice. Wait, wait, do you like her music or do you like her music videos? Both. <laughs> I really like the videos, though, to be honest. <laughs> if I had to pick one, if I could only watch the, the video or hear the music, I'd probably watch the video. <clears throat> watch the video. Yeah. Okay. 100%. Okay, uh, TV shows? <laughs> I'm not um, Perry. I'm with you. Fireworks are tuned. Dude, fireworks is jammed, dude. Um, TV shows? Uh, me and my girl, me and Sam, we watch, um, we watch Survivor. 
You guys familiar with that at all? Or? Hey, man, you guys got to jump on him. He said him and Sam. Y'all just fucked me all up when I said Kate likes to watch the Cambodian girl cook. Yeah, we, we, we both feel, to, we we both feel bad about it. In. Dive deeper. Both, what, what do you do when Sam's not around? What do you <laughs> – if Sam caught you, if Sam walked in the room and you were doing this, this is yeah. the thing you're embarrassed about. That's what I want to hear right now. <sighs> the thing that I'm embarrassed about. Like, you want to hide this from Sam, the person you love most in this world. You feel like she would love you less if she knew about this. Okay, hold on. I got to look oh, at my shit. YouTube history. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible, bro. You're trying to, you know, our wives watch this shit, right? Shit. I'm safe. Mine doesn't. She has no right. care what I do. Let me, see, let me see what I got here in my YouTube history. Shit! <laughs> Chat says I thought I like Wilson until now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew you, Wilson. Heavy yeah, metal mama like, in the house. I mean, while you're looking there, mine's going to be very, very similar to Wilson's. So Gary. mine is actually not what you expect. I mean, you guys know the depravity that I indulge in both in right. games and, and searches, um, videos, and God knows what else. That, to me, is not a guilty pleasure. My guilty pleasure is my research. Um, so for me, I find that I will spend ungodly amounts of time going down the rabbit holes of Wikipedia. Um, so for me, I will start just wanting to know, you know, I might see an actor on TV or in a commercial, and I wonder what they look like in 2017. So obviously I'll Google that. Then I'll see that, and they'll say actors similar to that, and I'll think, hmm, I haven't seen that actor in a while, so I'll click that. Then I'll see what movies they're in, and I'll look through movies, and then I'll see someone else, and I'll kind of go down that long and winding rabbit hole. We've where... been witness to this, and it's actually fascinating to watch. But you oh, find it's... this to be a guilty pleasure, Gary? I Gary's do, because... I meant to spend like time either working at home or doing housework or generally being productive. And I find that, you know, somewhere in the region of eight to 10 hours of the day will pass. And all I found out is, you know, who the members of Suede were or, you know, whether there was Big Big G, Lil G and, and Slick Johnny in the, in the group that we were listening to. And just generally going down that rabbit hole of finding out information and just assimilating and and cataloging it for later usage and that to me I, is a guilty pleasure i do that gary but i do it only with stuff that i think is like meaningful to what i do so i like to watch the news i won't say which channel and i'll, I'll be listening to someone who has an opinion i would argue you know, that you watch any news agreed anyway <laughs> anyway um because they I'll dress listen. in suits and say they're the news doesn't mean they're actually the news you got a good point there you have a great point there um but I'll, I'll listen to an opinion and then I'll go on the internet and find every fucking detail about this person. Because usually if they have an opinion that I kind of agree with, I'll find out the background, who their fucking parents were, uh, you know, what's going on in their life. You know, did they have a hematoma? I'll, I'll look up all the information and then I'll just relay it to my wife the next day. And she'll look at me and say, why the fuck do you know that? Mr. Just, Perry died of a hematoma, but Mrs. Perry, thankfully, is doing OK and living in go. Orlando. <laughs> that's 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 it, Briar. You nailed it. You nailed it. But you guys should definitely check out cat uh, cat spay and neuter videos. They will they will really do something for you. I'm not watching uh, animals be operated on no, in my fine. free time. They, the Bibble Popper thing, don't... I've seen it because my wife watches it and it is fucked. Doctor Lee, no, gross. it's not. Briar, do you know how good these people feel after they have this shit? Removed? It is gross, man. I don't people go in there. All sorts of shit can happen to the doctor that I don't need to see. I, fuck, I don't even want to see the shit they do to me half the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's like, so it's it's so relaxing to see that stuff. And you see this liquid, this goo coming out, and then she squeezes, oh. and then like a seed pops out. Bloop, you're like, oh my oh. god, that was in there. It's the greatest shit ever. I love it. Doctor Doctor Angela Lee is the best pimple popper. Oh, and heavy metal god. heavy metal oh. mama watches it, but she says it's not a guilty pleasure. So. I'm gonna come right, to Wilson, I feel like you've you've deep dived. You found look at him. He looks he looks and you're, right now. You're debating. Should I should I even Say reveal it? this to the public? I've, I've I've passed over it, and I was kind of <laughs> looking for for other stuff. But <laughs> I may have watched a couple seasons of Charmed. <gasps> no. Nice. I like Charmed. Yeah. <laughs> of course you do, Gary. Maybe that, three. That's Maybe three my problem. To be exact. Okay, so this is my problem, right? Is I don't have any any guilty pleasures because I'm not fucking guilty about it. 
I've watched every episode of Buffy, and Me I too. loved it. <laughs> the best shit ever. I I enjoy talking about Supernatural to my chat, even though I know I acknowledge it's a terrible fucking TV show, but I fucking <laughs> love the shit out of it. I celebrate Taylor Swift's entire fucking catalog. <laughs> like I I just there's nothing to be embarrassed about here. Yeah. I'm pretty embarrassed you. for watching Charmed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be just... Wilson. You shouldn't be. <laughs> it's it's a television show and you can watch it. You can watch Just it like watching want. people get their brains pulled out by Dr. Lee. No, that's it, gross. It's a YouTube channel. There's and something wrong in your head, man. You need to get you need to next time the doctor's got his finger up your asshole checking out your prostate, <laughs> hey, why don't you stick a finger in my ear and see what's up in, around going on around here too? Because you should see probably the shit probably I'm a watching. Finger. <laughs> yeah, a hopefully a finger. finger but... hey, definitely get an ear infection. <laughs> yeah, probably so, man. Probably so. Kate's into that shit. She watches Grey's Anatomy and all these other little girly frilly shows, and I see it in passing. But I used to be addicted chick- to ER. I watched I watched every Kate episode watched, of that she, as it came Kate, out. She's huge on that. Um, but thank God for her. As I get ready for bed. Because she knows I go to sleep before her. I'll come in the room. The Xbox will just be on the menu. She'll be breastfeeding the baby and she'll be asleep. And I asked her a few nights ago, so how come you never watch anything? She says, because I know you're going to come in and watch YouTube. And then when you get done with YouTube and fall asleep, I'll watch what I want to watch. So I have a very courteous woman. I, I, I can never take that for granted. I love yeah. you, Kate. Yeah, I'd say this. What about music? You guys got any guilty pleasure music? Utada, I got a tattoo on my arm of Utada Hikaru, the one of the biggest Japanese singers of all time. She actually sang Simple and Clean, or Hikari in Japanese, for the Kingdom Hearts series. One of the best I, singers of, of our time. We we started listening to Wham! on the ride home from my mother's house on Christmas Eve, and I was digging nice. that. I don't, I'm not embarrassed about it, though. It's not, I don't feel That's guilty about it. It's fucking Wham! That's fucking I have awesome! such an eclectic <laughs> music is the man. taste that I, I don't consider... <laughs> like what i like in music to be a genre um for me like i listen to pretty much everything um and and anything there so like you say if if wham comes on if the disney's if the moana soundtrack's playing i'm fucking jamming like the moana soundtrack some hot shit like i'll listen to anything you know disney stuff kids stuff because i've got a son you know i'll listen to then rap and british grime listen to rock listen to anything else i don't think there's music I'm not something listening that... to it but like if you pull up at a stoplight yeah that's exactly what i'm about to say it's the middle of summer and your windows are down sing yeah. us okay. a song you're the piano man yeah you can't listen to that shit in the hood okay i but fucking you can scream that out from an open top jeep let me tell you it doesn't work when you're my <laughs> color i've tried okay look i'm singing yellow brick road by uh elton john in the yeah. middle of the hood i might get shot so what oh, about yeah. you? all right well I, Personal danger is not the same as as feeling embarrassed. Feeling it it makes you feel yeah, it, it does make you feel guilty. I, I think you to. won't. I think that's actually a bit of a decoy there. I think they'll think you're an undercover fuzz there, you know, just in the scope out the area. They think this guy wouldn't be that this stupid. Dude's definitely a narc, pills, man. He's listening to yeah. fucking Elton John. I'll this dude is <laughs> I think he's wearing blackface. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> I gotta yep. switch it for the Marvin Gaye quick. <laughs> Shit. You know, no, it's, like it's, I said, it's really I, it's really weird for me, right? Because I listen to everything. I, I literally listen to music from all genres, barring ninety nine percent of hard uh, hardcore rock. But it all depends on where I am. You know, certain areas have certain people, and and certain music suits certain environments better. And sometimes I'll be driving from one neighborhood, and I'll be playing some Rod Stewart, and my wife's looking at me like, "Where the fuck did you come from?" Then I get to another neighborhood. And I gotta play some Young Jeezy, because it just doesn't work everywhere. You know what works everywhere? Soul music. Yeah, everybody right. loves soul music. You can across the nation. You favorite can soul the, music? Let me, let me hear, Brian. What's your favorite? Uh, it's gotta be uh, what's his name? He was just in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame probably three years ago. George he, Mayfield? No. Uh, what's his name? George Clinton? <laughs> no, but he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call that soul. That's funk. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's that, that is funk. But well, also, funk works. Funk works. Funk 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 is good. Ohio players is some good shit. Man. Yeah, some Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Oh my God. Who sang "Lean on Me"? Hollow Notes. Hollow Notes. Hollow Notes um, is great. Uh, uh, "Lean on Me" is um uh lovely day, lovely day. Um, yeah, I was just that guy. To him. Yeah. 
God damn it. Now I got to find his name. That guy is my favorite, I think. Yeah, that but that I... that is music that really does resonate everywhere. Yeah. Um, God, he makes some good music. We missed out on some of the best music of our lifetimes, earlier eras. We shouldn't be listening. What's that guy's to this. name? God damn it. I, I'm about to find out right now. I'm on YouTube. I still maintain that Disney's Moana soundtrack is equal to, if not superior Slithers. in most ways. Bill Weathers. Bill Withers. Bill, Bill, Bill Withers. Oh, yeah. yeah. That guy has got a the catalog. Most awesome voice. He's the, the guy you've never heard of that has the deepest catalog you've you've ever heard because you recognize every one of his songs and then you found out he wrote half the songs you love <laughs> like he he was he was a more prolific writer than he was a singer too yeah just the two of us you know we like can make it if we try just the two of, two, us. Just two of us you and i you and i <laughs> <laughs> gary where was you at man I was listening to the Moana soundtrack as I keep telling you. It's a fucking jam. <laughs> Guys are lost. Gary's life soundtrack. It is. It's got Dwayne it's Johnson. Better than Can You Feel the Love Tonight? It's the best song from any Disney movie. No, and, this, and that's this part of growing part, up, though, oh. right? Is that you, you stop getting embarrassed by stuff. Like you start stop feeling guilty about it unless you're doing something seriously depraved. Well, I've been there. You don't, you don't get that embarrassed anymore, like. If, if me, I was in high school when grunge was like the big thing, right? And I still said, you know what? I fucking love me some, I love me some Bon Jovi. You know, I would have been embarrassed. I would have, I would have hidden my Bon Jovi. I would have hidden my, my love for the hair rock. But now, fuck you. I'm old. I, I don't give a shit what you think anymore. I wear Crocs and socks, motherfucker. Come at me. <laughs> Crocs and socks. Blair and Come JBJ. That's it. <laughs> That's it right there. It, Come it, at this, me. This is this is my thing, and, and it might just be because I'm I'm the black guy here, but I grew up listening to it all, and it doesn't make me any different than anyone else. I love all music, but I've found that throughout my life that when you're in a black environment, certain music just they don't play it. They don't under, They don't know where you're coming from, and so for me, I make it easier on the people around by just being the chameleon who adapts to those environments. You know, I can be in any environment and sing the same music as the people there. But if I bring, you know, Snoop Dogg greatest hits to a bunch of, you know, people. I'm the same way, not- Beastly. I, I grew up like my my I, I grew up in a split family household where my fa- my mother lived in like rural Connecticut, but my father lived in New York City, Chicago, and Philadelphia. So like I have this like split personality where I can go hang out with inner city yeah. kids, but I can also hang out with the rural kids. Yes. Same. That's exactly what happened to me. I'm so fucked. But it, I, I feel like you grow as an individual because you, you're exposed to so much more. And while you're yeah. a small kid, maybe you can't, maybe you can't assert your own personality as much as you can as an adult. But being exposed to so many cultures and so many different things as a kid makes you a makes you a stronger and more diverse adult. Well, let me just say this, right? When I was working in Ohio a few years ago. I had a big speaker uh, and it was connected to my phone and I was driving a forklift and I had my own area. I was a heat treater. I had my own playlist of music and I was the only that black guy. That was my in college place. nickname, the heat treater. Are you kidding me? No. Treating that heat. I was treating it. <laughs> treating we, there's too many head. fucking parallels. It's like the twilight zone. But one day I, I, I was driving the, I was driving the forklift back into my little section here to set up another load, and I swear, almost everybody in the shop was standing back in the corner. Something listening I enjoyed to my music. doing in college was setting up another load. You Ooh. sick fuck! Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, but I almost lost it when you said, as a pizza boy, you delivered hot loads of happiness to people, which I was <laughs> fantastic. Hot, fresh loads of happiness. Fresh loads good. of happiness. This episode Long of Revolver has worse. been brought to you by Lucid. Uh, Are you still lucid? (laughs) Arguable. I I gotta say, bro, you did a magnificent job. You know, you're just as happy as usual, just as jovial as normal. I would have thought by now you'd be, you know, getting ready to piss in a bottle or something. Great job. I haven't stood up yet. Shit. (laughs) Half the battle. 
Yeah. I mean, it was about the 45th minute in when he started self catheterizing, so he just hadn't realized it. It's been <laughs> constant pissing just happening just, throughout the show. I've just been pissing all over the floor for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> To this new stream <laughs> setup video. This is my catheter, so I don't have to get up and take a piss during my oh, podcast. Please, please have a catheter on your stream setup video. That would my be left nut for a young man's bladder. <laughs> <laughs> my right well, nut for a young man. Well, two announcements before we get ready and leave uh, this episode. We will not be uh, doing Revolver Live next Sunday, as right. it will be a New Year's event, and we've all decided to spend that New Year's celebrating. But Gary, Gary, no- Gary has, nope. in, in in lieu of a new episode of Revolver, Gary has uh, r- promised to live stream his entire New Year's Eve party, which we're really looking forward to. Oh, God, I'm in. <laughs> I believe the words, white girl, I'm going to get white girl wasted. <laughs> yes, white girl wasted. Yes. Those were said. Those were said. <laughs> It's uh, just going to be me tearfully masturbating to Overwatch <laughs> videos. That's all it's going to be. Just eight hours of just shame wanking. Shame wanking. <laughs> tracer. I guess. I Tears guess falling is. onto an erect penis. It's just a sad song. Why do you have to be gay, Tracer? I loved you so much. I could have given you the world. Yep. Exactly. Could have had it all. We're not, we're not done here, Gary. You still got to let us know what Revolver is playing for Revolver Plays. I've got an just... idea. I need to, um, again, I need corroboration with my guests. Uh, or my, uh, my guests. Mm-hmm. My uh, co-host. Guests, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> guests. <laughs> um, guests on the Gary yeah, show now. You've been yeah. you've been great guest. No, my co-host. Um, I it's, it's there is going to be a cost to purchasing it, so just need to see if we can all do it. But I was looking at a, a little title that's in the Steam sale for six dollars, and it's called Overcooked. Um, oh! it's a fantastic title. Yes, I heard a lot I'm about in. this game. Six dollars. Right. Yes, done deal. Yeah. Yes, I think it's about six dollars. Um, give or take. You don't need the DLCs to to do what we're going to do. Uh, it's a game that requires coordination. Um, it is a game where you work together to cook um, these quite complex meals in ever-changing environments. And it's pretty fantastic because it requires, uh, as you say, really tight coordination and good teamwork, which we have neither of. Um, So I think it should be pretty hilarious to watch on stream. (laughs) Sounds good, Gary. I think that's an amazing idea, Gary. It's on sale right now, too. Perfect. I'm going to buy it. I think think it's $6. I might be wrong. Uh, for anybody out there who might be interested in Humble Bundles, check out the ones that are going on right now. They have some amazing deals that end today. If, you, if you're if you interested in uh, graphic design, if you're interested in a video are you, editing. Are you getting sponsored, Beasley? What's going on here? I didn't see any of the sponsorship money. What's going on here, Beasley? I'm trying to save our viewers fuck? some fucking dollars. Beasley, god damn it. What, what are these deals? You Mother, can spend $20 on you're $930. Out here, you're, out here so, you're out here pimping. You're out here pimping for the Humble Bundle, and I ain't seen a dollar. Yeah, no. I want some of that humble bundaroo money. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like humble bundle. They were bought by, uh, <laughs> they were bought by IGN, were they as well recently? So now you're uh, are you sponsored by IGN? Anyone? But, Do we have affiliations with them? No. Look at Briar's eyes. Look at him. I'd like to be. Yeah, I like to be. Pick up the phone, IGN. You want oh, this man. quality content? As seen in PC Gamer magazine, the yeah. Briar Rabbit. Rabbit. And Forbes, don't you can't Forbes. Forbes. <laughs> we should go. I'm really. I done. think that's the show. <laughs> yeah. It's, ready to call it's it? Quarter past one a.m. I think I'm ready to call it. Oh shit! It is. It is quarter past. Yeah, we should end it. Too much fun for one episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Revolver Live episode 22. We'll see you in two weeks and in a week and a. Well, a week and two days for Revolver Plays. You guys be there, be square. That's right. Stay strong. Fight the good fight. Stay black. May the force be with you.